wonderful. <laughs> What's that for? Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, shit. I don't know. Mr. Maybe wonderful. Welcome to be well- <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Welcome to Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, episode 193. Wonderful. Wonderful. Right? <laughs> it's a it's wonderful kind of, world. I'm picturing it. You know when you get that image in your head, but you're just like, it's like you're going through the database of like, what movie could this be? Yeah, <laughs> dude. And it's wonderful. Fuck. Yeah. It's killing I me. Anyway. Hey, Dave, I got to, first off, I got to thank you again for having me over. Thank you oh, and the family for having me over. I freeloaded. Like I was going to come record and leave. Thank God I didn't do that. I would have had to kill so much time. <laughs> She, this guy. I left thinking I was going to be like getting in and she's going to be waiting outside for me. I was there for an hour and 15 minutes. Of course you were. She still was st- not done. After was leaving there... you. Oh, I was. And the you could have watched the big. The, oh, my God. The football game. All that crazy shit. Up. I don't know if you I saw know. it. Yeah, you could have seen it on the TVs there. What it's like to I, be a Bills I, fan. You could have experienced yeah. it firsthand. Well, the thing is, though, let me tell you this. Me, if, if you could see the text between me and my friends. We all expected us to fucking not to win. When, when things go, see, we have that mentality. See, we know what it's like so much to be a Bills fan. The Leaf fan. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we know where it's going to go. Everybody else around, this is the thing that is very perplexing. Everybody else in the city, everybody else we know, family members, this and that, they're always gung-ho about fucking the Bills and this and this, and they get a hot start and, and what's going on and this. And all this stuff goes on, and they do it week after week, game after game. And there, I cannot take a dump on optimism. It is great to be that way. I can't. But it's it's almost like, how do you not know? See, that's the, I expect when things go on. Night a of the creeps. Like, Land of the, the creeps. Sorry. Night of the creeps. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> sorry, Tom it was Atkins. killing me. I, yes. Wow. I, I, it was driving awesome. me crazy. Anyway, Wonderful. okay. I that's apologize, great. but I know you're gonna fuck it up. <laughs> that's how you gotta do so, it. That's that's how I yeah. live my life. That, well, that's, that's how my mind. That's sports you know? fans, right? Sports fans. Like if Buffalo. you don't have that hope, if you don't, wow, well, Toronto, the same thing. The Leafs, the Leafs, the Leafs. Yeah, but the Leafs have won championships. But they have won championships. Buffalo teams are known losers. They're known fucking chokers. They cannot win a championship. Buffalo is the city of good losers. That's what I call it. It's supposed to be the city of good neighbors. I call it the city of good losers because, but they're really, but they're such good losers that every year they have hope. And every year, every time they do something good, they get to the, and here we are sitting here and it's the, it's like, you know, it. like me, like you could see the three of us having a conversation text and more like, well, we all know the way this is going to go, right? Because we've experienced, and it's what I say, and I know it's a, a fucking a pun, but I say being a sports fan in Buffalo is like being in an abusive relationship all your life. You know how when someone's in an abusive relationship, they keep thinking, oh, I love them. They're going to change. They're going to stop doing this to me. They're gonna- that is what it, but but I've real, I can identify. Oh, analogy. But gonna- I get it. I get it. <laughs> At the end of the day, they're going to disappoint me. So I'm not going to put them up on a pedestal and say, this is the time they're going to change. This is it. When you've been let down for fucking 30, 40 years, this time, and th- how can you still have that? Didn't they I, win a it, Super Bowl back in the 90s? They won four straight years and lost four straight years. No, they will yeah. never win a championship. I bet fucking money on it. I will bet money. I, 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 I've told people... Anyway, I, why even get into it? But I, I'm just saying well, you you could have really seen what it's like to be a Buffalo fan and and how even when something happens towards the end, even last year they were up there was 13 seconds to go and they went up and I don't know if you followed it and what happened, but when it happened everybody's ho- hoop jumping and hollering and hooting and this and that and I put money on the other side on the fucking on the app because I said well <laughs> I go I'm gonna bet nothing big ten bucks or something because I know. The way it's going to, I, everyone else is thinking the game's over. If I see any time on that clock that's conceivable whatsoever for anything to go wrong, it will for a Buffalo team. So I'm, you can't even, every time a team scores a touchdown, I don't even celebrate un- the same. until I, I, the, I see there's no flags. Cause I'm always anticipating yeah. flag being thrown this and that. Everyone else immediately pops and jumps out of their seat. See, this is the thing. I'm not being good asshole. It's like this. Hmm. But I'm not an asshole to think, but it's, but see, look at it this way. What would you rather be? Think, what mind state would you rather have? Constant disappointment or constant keeping it fucking mellow. And then when it's time to celebrate, celebrate knowing that no one can take it away from you. 
Oh, I like the second choice. I think. I, I I, yes, I I will I agree with that. Form of fucking thinking. Shift People shift. think it's it's negativity. It's 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 being real. It's it's not negative. It's actually a higher form of optimism. It's saying that when I do get happy, I want to make sure that this is real. That I really am happy, and I'm going to stay that way. Because there's for me, there's nothing worse than than heartbreak and letdown. Like I don't like getting my hopes up for shit to have them put down. So I would rather keep everything tempered. So that when it does happen and I can truly reach that moment, it's just like what I say about going to the movies. I don't watch trailers because I don't want that moment taken from me. It's the yeah. same. I live my life for those moments where I fucking – it's pure ecstasy. And when I celebrate, you know it's, there's a reason to celebrate. So anyway. I, and well, I did miss it. But I saw the disappointment when I walked into the thing because they had it on the TV. And there's a, a group of people not watching the dances, watching the Bills game. And oh, there was sure. no cheering. There's just no cheering whatsoever, and it was the end. And, and I hadn't, I didn't actually realize until my daughter said, "Yeah, I guess they lost because there's no nothing happening." Uh, but yeah, I could have, I could have spent more time there, uh, even more than I did. Um, and you know, I apologize for the audio things. That damn microphone, for whatever reason, it, it was as close to you as it was to me, and I was off the fucking charts. I don't know <laughs> what the hell happened, but it was like, <laughs> it was like I had the, that big Jimmy in my mouth, and you were fine. <laughs> You're in the same room, two feet away from me. You're fine, and I sounded like I know I'm loud. I hear it every day. Like, God damn, you're loud. Well, now like, you know when, it. There you go. But. But I guess because I, I could control what's going in here, <laughs> it doesn't come through as bad. But, oh, man, I guess because of the way we set it up, it was just off the fucking charts. The <laughs> only thing I would have done, and it had nothing to do with Carly, and I think that was the other thing. I felt bad for Carly because I almost couldn't appreciate that she was on there because we were live together. But right. you're right, because otherwise it would have just been you and I like talking like this. But I think it would have worked. I think it would have worked. And again, I'm not trying to take anything away from Carly. Carly was awesome. It's great to have her on the show. Yeah. But it just was like too much distraction because we also just had that technical snap foo <laughs> or whatever happened yeah. with you. <laughs> it's always something, right? It's always something. Well, see, speaking of that, that is why I baby everything I own. That's like even like this microphone, for example. I know what I can do. I know how loud I can be. Even now, I'm different. I, I I lean closer. I do this and this. And I listened back, although I haven't listened back to the last three episodes because I'm not working right now. But this, this damn foot. And that's when I usually listen. So I – but I know in the past, sometimes I'll get loud and I hate the way it sounds on the thing. So I try not to raise my voice too much. I try to keep it at the same decibels. I turn that to like, yeah. cause you know this is gonna happen. Now that's gonna sound like but, shit when I listen. No, back. I know what it is. You're fine. I don't know what it's doing, but it's my, like I don't even think you've got like, cause it should have been doing that to me too. But for whatever reason, it wasn't, cause that was fine. You sounded great, or sounded fine. It didn't kill you or overmodulate or anything. But I, I was there, like I said, it was like it was half down my throat. <sighs> ah, this poor bastard. <laughs> well, it was a hell of a time. That, that's all that matters, you know. And people poor listening. Carly. I know, poor Carl. That's what I said. I said I hope he weren't. I think I have. To, I think I messaged her later on that day, and I said something about I hope he weren't too unbearable or something, <laughs> something like that. That we weren't too fucking obnoxious. My obnoxious might have been the word just I me. used. It was just me. <laughs> nah, nah. We were bouncing off the walls, man. It was like Lucy Ball, you know. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was Buffalo. great. It was great to yeah. see you, and and great to meet the family in person. Right? Because it's yeah. funny because you just, even though I've, I've only seen pictures by Reen and, and Fran, Frankie, I, I was calling her Fran, but Frankie. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> You're like, yeah, Fran. Yeah. Uh, she know, was on. Mom. She's <laughs> been on the show. She's popped in on camera. You'll hear her voice, but I haven't actually met her. So it was kind of nice to meet, to meet her in person as well. Well, I'll tell you. Mr. Hospitable, gonna... everybody. I'm telling you. Just invite yeah. yourself to Dave's house and you'll take care of you. I'm down with that. Yeah, come on over. You should. I don't know how Irene's gonna feel about everybody, but me, <laughs> I love it. Well, number one, I don't. I don't. I, I. Here's the thing. I. I'm one of those weird people that that comes off as fucking like when I talk about. I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to go here. I don't like to be around people. I don't like this, this, and this. And this. it sounds like I'm a uh, an introvert and that I'm not sociable. It's not that. I I really just. I want to be around a circle of people that I that I that I'm friends with and people that I can vibe with and 
I just don't like leaving the house. I just, I, I am a person that would rather have the party come to him than him go to the party. But yeah, so I I, I, I'm extroverted. I am extroverted when I'm with my people and I'm cool and I'm in my a comfortable climate. And when I go out to work, you know, every job I've had, I do come off as a social cat because I know how to do because everything's an act. It's like we talked about last week. I believe I'm an actor. I don't really want to fucking be at work. I never really wanted to be at any job. But when I'm there doing customer service, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like I am right now. And inside, I'm fucking like, oh, I want to be anywhere but fucking here. But you, you got to make the most of it. So, yeah, you know, Life. it's the I same thing. So it's an act. That's all an act. But if you're in my house, if, if you come here, I fucking love that shit. And I, I mean... I love hosting parties. I just don't like going anywhere. I'm just fucking lazy. That, that too. You know what? I think it's lazy. the same thing too. I, I was never like that younger. I'd say that that happened a little bit more in my late, ooh, here I go, hitting the fucking mic already. Late 20s, maybe early 30s. That's where it kicked in. I used to be like, yeah, no problem. Go, go, go. Like you knew you got home from work. It didn't really matter what time you got home from work. Right. Freshened up, took a shower, whatever, went out. And had yeah. fun. Something, and, yeah. And rinse and repeat. It didn't matter. At school, didn't matter what day of the week it was. There was always something happening. True. But I would rather cruise around with buddies than go into a bar. Like, we got to the point, like, in my 20s and stuff, my young, my early 20s and shit, where I would rather just cruise around and fucking and get high and park and hang out with my buddies and shit than, than actually go into a bar. And, and be around all that noise and all. Now, there's a reason to go into the bar if you're looking for females. That's where the fuck they are, obviously. So if you if you're into that mode, not in your buddy's trunk, I hope. <laughs> no, there's there's. A, I mean, there are female friends that were partying with us too, but you know what I'm saying. I wasn't out yeah. hooking up with them this way. So, but that would be the reason I would go. And now, a house party is completely different. If I would, I would much rather go to a house party at that age than a bar. I to this day, honestly, if I'm gonna go somewhere. I'm more comfortable with just going to somebody's house. But again, a house party in your teens and 20s is a lot different than going to a house party now full of fucking adults and their children. Yeah. Kind of a fucking yeah. drag now. I mean, you got to do all I that. I can't break their lamp. No, I always <laughs> hated the house parties because I always worry. I'd be the one that would be worried about, like, I hope this place doesn't get trashed. And I'm like, I don't want to hit anything or whatever. I, I was a worry wart that way where no one else gave a shit. Right. Because it wasn't their house. Or they had no respect for anything. I care. They did. Like, right. I just that was the way it was. I just like I hope this place doesn't get trashed. Right. Well, for sure. Right. No, and that's and it did happen sometimes. And the, but then oh, you knew yeah. it was going to happen sometimes. It's just the way it was. But I prefer a house party to a bar because even if you go to a house party, you can sit hang out with just a few people on the couch or this and that. It's easier to talk to girls there because at the bar, who fucking knows? You know what I mean? The music's so loud, you can't even really get a good conversation. And there's so many people around you. It's almost like, and if you're too if you're too buzzed, I don't know, like me. I, w I would be too buzzed. I would be too high. I don't want to be going be around a whole bunch of fucking people in a nightclub scene. Just wouldn't. Well, just, you know? Remember back in the day, like you could just smoke in the bar. Like, it was just a big cloud of smoke. Like it oh, was wow. just Cigarette, constant yeah. smoke, smoke, smoke. Like I mean, nowadays, like you can't even do. Like you gotta go, like excuse yourself. And if you're even lucky to get like in and out privileges, depending where you go to have a smoke. Like you're stuck there now. Like, they, but back in the day, it didn't matter. Like, it's crazy what you. I remember going to the university, and there were still ashtrays in the desk. Now you couldn't smoke in your lectures, but that shows how much it's changed over time. Because you could smoke during lectures, very short time before I got there. So when I was still like at that Man. age, smoking in bars. Restaurants, you had a smoking section in a restaurant, smoking yep. section in Tim Hortons, airplanes, smoke, well, actually smoking like just in airplanes, which like is crazy. smoking bars. I mean, then the airplanes pulled back. Tim Hortons yep. would make a, a glass encased room that you could smoke in. A restaurant I, I ended up like having one area or, or totally, totally barring it. And then it just became you weren't allowed to smoke indoors pretty much, unless it was your own car or your own house. <laughs> Right, That's and you know what? Pretty much what I'm, it's come to. I'm glad because I'm allergic to it. So, yeah, that, that's or a casino fine. in Vegas. Vegas Ugh, is just like the same thing. I mean, I know they well, couple yeah. that oxygen, but fuck. they help. You have to have the right system. You gotta have the right system for a casino because if you don't, 
Like they did not have the right system at the at the casino out here. Because the casino out here, when I first came here from Buffalo, for, for, back from Vegas, I should say, the Niagara Falls Casino used to be the Niagara Falls Convention Center. They turned a fucking convention center into a casino. So, awesome. and then they they spent money on this fucking thing for the Civica? smoke, and it didn't work, of course, because they do everything fucking wrong. Right. So they did because they don't know what they're doing, really. They just didn't. So they say, oh, we got a casino. Let's put it up, this and this and this. So, but no matter what, the fucking smoke was always there because their their ventilation system was just not good. It wasn't built for it. Then they spent money, big fucking money, on a state-of-the-art fucking big one. Eventually, after like so many years, I forgot how many. I was there when it happened. And they put in this fucking big one because it was such a problem. And then the thing ended up being too fucking loud. They couldn't turn it on. That is the fucking... Like- that loud yeah like that, that is that the was... fucking that is how they do business these dumb fucks that think they know shit about fucking running a casino and then meanwhile they they, they they fucking they found some guy pumping gas on the reservation the they said hey you hey, you want to be a fucking you want to run a casino come here literally that's fucking what it was they they, they had fucking people and i understand why you know reparations and all that stuff i get it but the thing is they rushed everything so quickly and they should have been, they should have been shown the way by people in Las Vegas. The biggest, the biggest sin of, of local casinos is that too many of them learn how to do stuff from Atlantic City. Like they didn't City. listen to Sin City. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's true. That's the fucking. Who why, are you gonna? Why is this? <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking. It's like, remember, remember that? It's like again, we've done this on the show before. Yeah. It's the dude from uh, the mountain climber dude from uh, the Price is Right. Oh, oh they play that song? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. How do they do that? <laughs> that fucking shit. Yeah. Something like that one, yeah. I can yodel. I can do it if I really... I can, I, you can do everything. I can yodel. Like, is that <laughs> on your resume? I can take Dave Zendano. I can yodel. <laughs> well, well if, we, if we make the movie, I'll yodel in the fucking movie. How's that? Yodel my act. yodel. <laughs> yeah, I can you I can act, I can yodel. What else can I do on the in, in the I movie? Can, I'll write that in. Just a random scene of you yodeling <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, why not? Why not see, do that? See, this means this means that he's uh I have no clue what it means, but I can just see people analyzing it. Why is this scene in this movie? <laughs> what what can well, he mean by yodeling? Oh I'm gonna I've brush got up a, on it. Another so I watched a bunch of movies again, and I, again, one of the Night of the Creeps, which is probably why Wonderful was on my mind. Wonderful. Uh, but another totally random, like, exploding heads. This is what you get when you listen to this show. A totally mm-hmm. random connection. Both from 1995, 1985, excuse me. Both with, um, okay, well, the two movies are uh, 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 Friday 13th, The New Beginning, and, of course, uh, Return to the Living Dead. Of course, we know. Um, I'm gonna fuck up his name. Numaz Junior, uh, the dude that plays like, uh, ooh, baby, hey, baby. Oh yeah, yeah, it's Miguel, like, Miguel Nunez Junior. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, thank you, Miguel. I forgot his first name for whatever reason. So his character is in both movies. There is another connection between these two movies. His character in Return to Living says, Return to the Living Dead says, you're out of your mind. Okay. You must be out of your fucking mind. And oh. of course. You've been wow. out, you're out of your fucking mind. You've been out in the sun too long. Jason wow. Voorhees is dead. <laughs> wow. Like, this is what you get when you listen to this show. A totally useless factoid from horror past. But still. Ghost of horror of, past. You're out of your yeah. mind. You don't hear that a whole lot these days, that that, that expression. Yeah. But back then, you're out of your but mind. From yeah, 95. Well. My God, 85. What the fuck is wrong with me? Get out of the fuck. Fuck the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Get, <laughs> Get out, out of the, the fucking 90s. 90s. I don't want to Unless do we're 90s. Talking music. Well, yeah, true. Unless we're talking music. But that's it. Well, or non horror movies, although there's still, I still yeah. argue. Because again, that's when I, to be honest, that was the heyday when I was in the theater. So previously, just before that was Rental Mania, and that continued all the way through the 90s, of course, but of 80s material, of course. Uh, wow. Uh, but going to the theater and seeing all the movies was a late 80s, early 90s. I'm talking specifically horror films, because, of course, I went to the theater to watch everything else before. What were you oh wowing? Rental mania. You just started a fucking whole thing in my head that went all over the place. 
Seriously, what a gimmick. Like WrestleMania, right? I should have called this thing down here Rental Mania and fucking – there should be like a show. Don't you think Rental oh, yeah. Mania because of the wrestling thing, Re- WrestleMania? Like, See, m- remember what I told you about titles? Remember I told you the title of that fucking script I wanted to write and how I thought it was yeah. clever enough that it would get some traction? Well, it's all about title, Rental Mania. If I had a YouTube fucking thing called that and just talked about movies that I rented in the 80s and shit there like that go. and had the VHS shelves – that could be a thing. Presented which, by, by way, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast. <laughs> well, of course. It's got to be on a thing, but Rental Mania. If I can find a way to do the font that looks like Rental Mania. See, I'm not a tech guy. I'm the idea guy. I never have any fucking skills. My skills are all up here. The problem is, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here, Here's my skills. They're imaginary. So the best, your resume <laughs> with I can yodel, and I don't have any fucking skills. <laughs> Hired <laughs> on the spot. As far as creativity, yeah. nothing creative about fake yodeling. I, I learned how to do that from a Disney record years ago. So <laughs> as far as uh, this is my skills, is that I'm a fucking thinker and that I have all these great ideas up in this brain, but I don't have the skill to do enough with it with my hands and the fucking patience. Like I see, I have the, I, I visioned this is how my mind works. Just because you said rental mania by action. By accident. My mind, I'm over here talking to you, but I'm over here, zip, 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 zip in this direction and in this direction, thinking of all the fucking things I could do with that title of Rental Mania and how I can turn it into something. But all I can do is think, and I'm plagued by thoughts, and I can't do it. Like, if I knew how to get the the old fucking gimmick that says WrestleMania, the way the logo looks, and put it on our channel and flip it, Dave Z presents... Rental mania in that font, and then it comes I out. Possibly like, fuck, I could possibly yeah, fuck no. around with that. Yeah, it's you know, time. I mean, it is time. It, see, that, that's what it is. You, we don't have enough people listening on the fucking YouTube, and this is what this is what's really. And then I get into that depression mode because I start thinking about this. Actually, okay, behind the curtain, right before when we came on here today, we had a couple tech issues getting getting going, and. As I was waiting for C to do something because we were doing some stuff, I was watching a video because. Because I've seen X and because I've seen Pearl so many times, four times each now to be exact, I am noticing more and more and more of the parallels of fucking things that are going on in these movies. And I'm like, okay. And I noticed more last night when I watched X. So I happen to um, – there's a song in Pearl and in X that I noticed last night is in both of them but a different – in a different form of it. So I'm Googling it and trying to find the lyrics and what is the song called and et cetera. So I go on YouTube. One thing leads to another and I find someone, it's like an eight minute video and it's the parallels of X and Pearl. And I'm thinking, okay, I wonder if there's anything else I missed that I fucking, I'm going to learn in this video. Literally, I watch this fucking video. They don't mention anything about all the fucking stuff that I've come up with. And the only thing they give me, which was clever, I may as well spill the beans on it now, but I didn't. It didn't occur to me. But the porno. Is that the that, both. <laughs> <laughs> Ty West directed both. No, oh, we know this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I missed everything but that. <laughs> no, um, the the, the, the title Sorry. of the porno. No, the title of the porno in X. What is it called? The farmer's daughter. Fa- farmer's daughter. Daughter. Oh, what are you fucking? <laughs> the farmer's daughter. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the farmer's daughter. I fucked her last night. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> farmer's daughter. Oh, oh exactly. So, what are you, a farmer? <laughs> the, the farmer's daughter is the name of the porno that they're making next. Well, Pearl herself is the farmer's daughter in the first movie. In Pearl, if you think about it. I didn't think about that. Okay, that's kind of cool, right? But here's yeah. the thing. This fucking video has, has 9,000 views and told me one fucking thing and none of the 80% of the other shit that I already know that I'm going to talk about on this podcast. They, this guy has 9,000 views on a fucking video. I'll be lucky to get 1,000. That's the fucking shit that frosts my balls right there. That's why... <laughs> It's true. That's why I can't dive into creative fucking things. Because if I put so much time, just so nobody else can see it, and all these other guys are getting all these fucking views and hits and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Frost- <laughs> I have frosty balls. It's fucking, I got two feet of snow. Frosty balls. Well, you got to do it. I'll, I'll try to get you that logo for Rental Mania. And see, I don't, I don't say those things by accident. I see them on purpose 
it's the way I talk. Because if something, if there's a lot of it, if there's a lot of commotion or whatever like that, I'll say things like, oh, I, I think I, I was in a movie, I'm like, um, Halloween, Halloween Central or whatever. My my wife would always be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Something central or whatever. But I think of like Grand Central Station, like it's busy. So I'm like saying it's like that. Yeah. That's just the way my mind works. And I, I talk like that. I just come up with these things. And so like rental mania is just another sort of offshoot of that. But it doesn't like it's funny because I never even thought twice about it. And there you go. Wow. Your mind went like latched onto it and went with wherever. And yeah, I'll try to create the logo for you. Like I said, it just means a lot of time. What you need to find is if you can that's find it. something and they, they have it out there. If they if you can find something that's created the font, then I can at least use the logo as a, a, a backdrop and then literally just play around with Wrestle and uh, go from there. I mean, at the well, end of the day, Wrestle has an R and E. We just and need, w, uh, and Mania, I could steal the N from the, so I, I mean, I might even be able to plug around with it just with the, the letters that are already in WrestleMania for Rental Mania and be able to uh, uh, fart around with it, so. But then you got to do it, and it takes time and everything else. And then my mind, I, then I go, I have so many fucking ideas. Now it's like, now I picture my voice at the beginning doing a Vince McMahon, like, but with a crowd noise in the background, because he, what he used to do in the early ones, he would be like, "Welcome to Rental Mania." That'd be my well, voice instead of Vince. You could right, do voices you know? <laughs> with a little crowd. Well, I could do a decent. That on the resume Vince. still? Yeah. What's that? I could yodel on the resume? Do voices, and I've got no I, fucking skills. I, oh, I can, that is one thing I can do, voices, I think, anyway. I don't know. I like to think I can. Yeah. I, I, my brother and what I, we, yeah. we can do it. We used to say we there should be a cartoon, which is him and I doing all the fucking voices. But uh, once again, it's the it's the da- it's the the damn system. Yeah, I can't be a fucking voice actor because I didn't go to school for it. Do I need to go to school to be a fucking voice actor? Uh-oh. You put a fucking animation in front of me right now and say, create something here, put a voice for this one and a voice for this and, and do it. I could do it because I don't, it's just a bunch of bullshit that fucking something like that, a specific job, voice actor for cartoons. You're not going to go to college for that. There is no fucking course for that. Basically, it's somebody that failed at something else in acting or in filmmaking and ended up they had a good voice to do it. They couldn't do this. So they kind of fucking, you know, fell backwards and landed fucking accidentally. Well, not accidentally. They had some skill. You can make good, good code for it. It might just be an actor no that shit. only like did video games and, and cartoons and, and whatever, because there's a whole there's a whole market for that. And. And it's it, it could be pretty lucrative if you're just jumping from right? one to the other. Imagine if this could be my job. I got a mic right here, and I'm just doing voices. And I, I I could totally do it. I know I could, but I can't. I don't have the opportunity. This is the problem. And again, maybe. Want to hear if, your Want to hear your foghorn leghorn right now? I say it. I say it. I don't know. It's the best I can do right now. I don't know. What does he say? You know? I say <laughs> you. Say, I, mean, I, I yeah. say, boy. I say. If you That's give me a line. Do. Right, I know. I can't well, get a line. I wanted you to have lip. <laughs> I was going to do a jerky voice. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you was a regular jackass. See, that's what I go to. That guy, Big Bob Big Billy. Bob has, yeah. Yeah. Bob, whatever what the, is his name? Big old badass yeah. Bob the Cattle Rustler. <laughs> wow. What a fucking name yeah. that is. See, same thing. Jerky voice. I know I could do. I do prank calls. Anytime somebody calls me. Most people run away from unknown numbers and this and that. They don't want to be bothered. I will welcome it because when I see a number, I know I'm going to prank them because I do because it's usually soliciting something. So what I do is I listen to their spiel. I pretend like I'm interested and I either A, turn it on them and at the end, the joke ends up being, you know, something how I fucked their mother or something. Then they'll hang up on me (laughs) and then or I try to sell them something. Right. Or I turn the tables and I end up. you know? I always think it's going to be more clever in my head, and then when I'm actually on the call, it's it's never that good. But I love playing with them. I like you're wasting my time. I got time to kill. Everyone's like, I have, I love these people that say, oh, you have too much time on your hand. We've talked about it on the show before. Like these are the busiest motherfuckers on the planet. Yeah. I got three kids. I got a job. I'm still able to fit other shit in. I don't understand how people can't fit shit in. Maybe stop going. If you're going to the gym two hours a day, if that's important to you, great. But then don't like. You know, if you're wondering why people can fit other stuff in, maybe it's because I'm not spending two hours at the gym. I'd like to spend oh, yeah. maybe one hour at the gym, but I'm not doing that yet either. But you know what I'm saying? There's a way, even when I was going to the gym with my wife, I was still didn't kick into my movie watching or any of the other stuff, recording the podcast, whatever it may be. When we can't record it, we just reschedule it. 
simple as right. that. I know. Life's not that easy that we can't do it. It could get busy, but it's never too busy to be able to still fit in the shit that you, you want to do and like. And so I'm just saying, like, it's funny when people say you have too much time in your hand. Because I forgot the point right now. The point was, uh, you were, <laughs> who we were talking about specifically is fitting uh, just... I'm like, I'm like totally drawing a blank. What, rental media? I went on a total tangent. Not rental media. What Bug were we just horn, talking about? Related to... Not even that. Just before. Like literally before talking about too much time on my hands to, okay, to do right what? Before too much I don't time even on... know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, bottom line is you have time to, uh, what did you have time to do? You had time to do something. Oh, I know. Prank phone calls. <laughs> That's what I, I totally went off. I totally forgot. That was it I... though. But, but I do the same thing for you, too, like that you do. I'll, like, listen. What happens is now I've gotten to the point where you just know. I don't know what it is, but I they know. call from every – it's all, like, they just have a random dialer, and it pulls from every town. It's a valid number for the most part, but it'll, it'll be from all over. It'll be from the States, but from random cities in Canada, whatever it may be. I know that it's nine out of ten times, nine out of ten times uh, duck cleaning for your air ducts at home. <laughs> <laughs> they call me every all the time. It's and it's funny because there is a Jerky Boys one where they talk about that. <laughs> it, 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 I try to avoid just using their material, but when they call, I just when I answer, I say, "Hey, duck cleaning, how can I help you?" And then they're like, uh, "They say duck cleaning." I'm like, "No, you're calling me. I'm duck cleaning." And then, and then, and then they and, and again, I, again, I think it's really great. You got to uh, solicit them though. Yeah, you got to well, see if. If they'll come for you. I say, well, look, I go, no, I'm sitting outside in the van. No one's letting me into the building. I'm here ready to clean your ducks and whatever. You just take it. And then eventually they just hang up because they realize right. you're, you're, they're wasting <laughs> their time. But that's that's the pretty much the extent of the wit <laughs> that comes. You know, from. I try to get their service. No, that's, I'm, when I say I solicit them, I mean, whatever they're doing, I pretend I have a business, right? And b- because they're trying to sell me something, I could say, you know what, if I what. I run, I run this business. This is what I sell, except, you know, and I, I don't use this voice. I use different voices, you know? So I do this and then it's an old lady. You're doing Dave Z. Well, sometimes I'm like, yes, hello. I look for a, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I shit like that. I do this, I do that. I do a fucking Funny old enough, man. That's how they sound on the other end. <laughs> sometimes they do. And I can just ma- match with them. I did it. I did it so good that I fooled fucking, I had a friend when I was at, at my pizzeria and he was from a couple guys, and they were from um, Pakistan. And um, what happened, I had two guys from Pakistan and one guy from India. And I was doing the voices so good at one point that that my buddy Ace, he, he's from Pakistan, he said he wanted me to fucking to get on the thing and talk to one of his family members and see if they know that I was just, you know, a Caucasian, quote unquote, man, fucking, and they fucking, they thought I was one of them. By the way, I was talking to him. I had the whole fucking thing, and and I just ad libbed something, awesome. and he, yeah, and it worked. So, but I try to solicit them in a way like because they're trying to sell me something, and I also sell something. I try to solicit them to come work for me. I try to find out what are they paying you, yeah. this and that. You can come do this year. I, I basically have me, and, and I go my grandmother, my grandfather, but they're they're approaching ninety. They're getting too old to do these things. Have a room in the closet for you. <laughs> I do, yeah, and I do. I, I'll go into fucking all these places with it, and I'll just try to solicit them and to come work for me yeah, and try to <laughs> see what they pay. But it's only usually. I would be at work and I'd be walking around listening to a podcast anyway or something. And that's when the call would come in. Or something, I'm, I'm, you know? I'm teasing. And this is my work phone. So that, that's always a fine line. Cause I don't have a person. I can't do the two phones where someone's like, I got a personal cell phone. I got a work cell phone. That's too much cargo for me. I gave mine I, back. My one work phone. phone. No, well, I couldn't, yep. I have to have the work phone. So I'm like, like, they don't care if you use it personally, but I probably shouldn't be like, when you know, I, I just look at it and you can just tell now that these are, they're not business calls. I know when they're not business calls. Like you could just tell the way the phone number is, where they're calling from, the way it pops up on the phone and whatever. It just, it just, it's not my territory or anything. So it's just very interesting. So I shouldn't do it, but I do do it because it's fun for me. Oh, it's great. Wait, so the people stop. I had a buddy at my old job. He actually went so far as to say, yeah, sure. Like, sure. Feel free to come over to my place, give him the address and everything. And then the people showed up the like, whatever the next weekend, it's like, no, I didn't agree to this. And the guy's left pissed off. Now, the problem was he said he awesome. did feel bad. He said he did feel bad because 
it's just a call center. It's kind of like a pyramid scheme in a sense. Like right. they reach in some sort of money, get local to come and get your and do the work for you. So the people that came local, which weren't so, so local actually, had nothing to do with the solicit soliciting phone call. They were just responding to whatever booked gig they got. So he did say he felt a little bit bad about that because these guys came out and he thought he was, give, you know, giving it back to the man when really, right? They, they didn't affect them at all. You're wasting <laughs> all. the time of the wrong people. You want to mess with the other people, not with these these employees. Here's a question: Have you ever used a joke on them when they call you so many times? Have you ever bought into it? And pretended like you thought that they were duck cleaning, D U C K, and like gone and, yeah, and take that's that place. the Jerky Boys one. Oh, you did like, that? I, yeah, he's like, oh. <laughs> see, I don't remember that. I one. have a new down pillow now. It's Kissel. <laughs> oh, it's a Kissel? Yeah, oh, it's okay. a Kissel. <laughs> see, I would make it sound like I want them to come and clean my ducks, like I have pets. I yeah. was like, okay, well, now listen here, we have a. Uh, we have a goose. I don't know if a goose is going to actually count for a duck. It's kind of big. He's about two and a half feet. Is that going to be too much for you to handle? We have we have ducklings, you know, of course. So I understand. And they, they are a little bit dirty dirty right now behind the wings. So so they might need, I understand, I, I how much is this going to cost me? Because they are a little bit dirty back there. And I don't, like, don't want to mess like a- with, with their anus or anything. <laughs> So, so anyway, I would just call it like an So Rosenberg, but that's exactly it. That would be like a jerk for boys esque one. Like, that's exactly it. Like he just keeps doing the noise. Because uh, if you know, like uh, Kamala, who's Kissel and uh, Kamala, big old badass Bob the Cattle Russell. His real, I think that's his real name. Um, oh, Kamal, K M A L. I think it's Kamala, like the fucking wrestler. Kamala. Kamala. <laughs> no, Kamal. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he president. almost like likes. At first, he would get people riled up. But it's almost like now he, like when you listen, like now it's like he's been out of it for ages. But back in the day, as the albums continued, it sounded like he wanted them in on the joke, which then kind of ruins the joke for us, the listener. Yeah, yeah. But but because of his giddiness and getting the people to laugh on the phone, you're almost it's almost like an infectious like reaction. So it, it works in a different. In a different way And again if anybody hates the Jerky Boys It's not going to win you over But if you are interested A perfect example of this would be uh, Crazy Little Elves Little Elves So go on YouTube Type in Little Elves uh, Jerky Boys And you'll know what I'm talking about For example of like (laughs) Taking the quick call to another level But literally he's laughing While he's doing it (laughs) Like it's funny Well yeah right (laughs) Yeah, but that's yeah, that is funny too, though. You're right. I wish somebody would call right now and I could fucking do a live <laughs> prank. All this talk about, I want to do dirty one anus. Now. You know, a dirty back there. Dirty. But... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. See, I don't even know where that came from. It just that's just how I do it. It just comes off the top of my head when when they're on here. I just start try to start spinning some shit. You know, I'm like, yeah, duck cleaning. Then I start thinking about ducks and how, how am I gonna make it uncomfortable for them? You know what I mean? That's how I think about it. And then do I just you... come up with it. You know? So the day after I saw you, mm-hmm. uh, we were going to do a, a three-day meeting at work, uh, local, but a three-day meeting. So I had to go pick up, a cu- and part of it involved customers, and then part of it was just a staff thing. So the next day, I had to go to, into Toronto, the heart of the fucking city, the Union Station, to pick up uh, Union Central, <laughs> Union Station, yeah. to pick up a customer and bring her back. And as I'm driving into Toronto midday, there's an accident on the other side, and I could just see it backed up. For kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Thank God I had like an hour before she came in. So by that point, it cleared and it was still chaos getting home, but manageable. Like the timing was great. Instead, I thought, oh, it's going to be like an hour and a half, two hours. It was no nowhere close. So I was like, thank God getting home. The point of the story is, um, do you ever have moments where there's something in your past? Well, you say your memory is shit, but there's something wow. that happened that was ridiculously funny, though. But for some reason, like I've told stories from shit that's happened in my past. I remember like rental stories. I remember shit that we talked about on the show. She reminded me. So this is a customer from like my past that I'm trying to bring on board with the circus that I work for now. And she told me a story that happened and it was like a flood of memories just came back to me. Like I totally forgotten about it. I remember the night she's talking about because 
I told her a story that happened that night. So I remembered this portion, how I forgot, which was no question funnier. And I got to tell you both stories. It's beyond me. And so here, here it goes, and I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but I think everybody will get a kick out of them because they're pretty funny. So the first story is very basic. Basic humor. I worked with a good buddy of mine, and we went to St. John's, Newfoundland. I mentioned this a couple episodes ago. This is my first time there, back in 2012. And it was for work. And we brought all these customers out and we had, you do a bunch of touristy things there, like kiss the cod, get screeched in, which is a really strong, like it's like a distilled drink. It's really strong. And, kiss and, the cod? Like a fish? Kiss the cod, a fish. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and it's, uh, it's all traditional in the area and whatnot. You kind of have to do all this stuff to, 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 to say you, you know, you've, you've visited St. John's or, or Newfoundland for, for that matter. Um, did all that, went to this, one of the stops was a bar. And it was just a di- like a, I was going to say a disco. It was just like a dance bar where it's like dark and lights are going. People are dancing, having a good time and whatever. I'm with my friend, like my buddy, and there's these girls and whatever like that, like customers, nothing nothing crazy or, or um, in a bad way. We were all dancing. All of a sudden, this horrible stench <laughs> breaks out. And the whole floor clears, except for my buddy and I. And we're just pointing our fingers at each other going, you! And he's like, you! And the music's going. So we just, it's just us two going, you! You! Like, how could you? Like, whatever. And then we get outside and we're like, oh, that was that was a putrid. That was horrible. He goes, I go, that wasn't me. What did you have? He goes, that wasn't me. And we would never deny if we cleared the oh, floor. Oh, I didn't think so it was we, you. We, so well, it wasn't me. It wasn't him. I didn't think it, it was. It was one of the girls. <laughs> no question it was one of the girls. And... Flash forward to last year, almost, almost a year ago. It was like December 1st. So uh, last year, I go to visit a customer that I, I only knew the boss. I'd only seen everybody virtually, but not, I, I, you know, it's virtual or on the phone or whatever. I hadn't seen them live. I go meet them live. And the Hurt staff were the group of girls that were there on the dance floor, and I couldn't tell the story because what? it was about them and, and, and whatever. So I'm just, I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, all giddy inside waiting. So I go text my friend. I go, I found the farters. Like, after all those years, because I hadn't worked with them or whatever, because I was it was just a different territory and everything else, different company, everything. So I was like, oh, my still? God. Yeah, they were all still working at the same company. I just didn't realize it was that company because they weren't my customers. They're right. they're another reps, but you're just out and entertaining and whatever. So it just was <laughs> one of those things. So it was just one of those things like sitting there going, oh, my God. So I remember this fart story. Same night. <laughs> later that night. It doesn't get any better because they're just drunk. Uh, we're out. And so the girl that I picked up to bring to bring the customer I p- picked up. You know. Let me rephrase that. To bring back to the... Uh, uh, event, uh, our, our meeting, she reminds me of the story of when we were at the bar and there was a band playing and all of a sudden we're standing there like enjoying the band and this and she guy. Farts. No. <laughs> Megan, she lifts up her leg and rips when she goes, by the way, <laughs> now mystery solved. It was me. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, man, there's still smell my pigeons. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for covering for me, Christian. No, I just she was at the end. I know you know it was me. Thanks for covering for me it ten years ago. This, this is totally separate. All of a sudden, this hand comes around her and grabs her like it's touching her boob. Okay, now and this is the present day. This is, no, no, this is back. This is the story she's reminding me. And okay. I just it, I'm like, you know, all of a sudden, I'm like, holy fuck! Like all the memories are coming back to me. She grabs it. It's a guy's prosthetic arm. She pulls it right off. I don't know what it was. And goes, four, and chucks it. Because, and across the bar. And of course the guy's pissed off. But like, it, like literally, he came over and made it cup her, her breast. So she had, like, it was like a defense mechanism. I mean, a right. Fucking right. And whatever. I'm like, holy fuck. And then we felt bad because it was the guy's prosthetic arm but then the arm gets t- brought back like it was it was crowd surfing crowd surfing <laughs> <laughs> the arm comes back like ba 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 and I go yeah and then like another co-worker gets it and he's like cheering with it like yeah holding it up oh, like it was a triumphant wow. sword as this band's playing it's a horrible story if you're the guy without the arm except for oh, don't, he don't, starts don't laughing he starts laughing. 
everybody's friendly. We get everybody gets drinks. He apologizes. We apologize. Everything's done. I mean, I didn't check the arm, but I was there. I can't believe I forgot this story. Like, I mean, that's a fucking crazy ass story. <laughs> but it all ended well after this pulled the arm, chucked across the bar. I am not, I'm not exaggerating at all. And then the crowd surfing of the arm coming back. <laughs> and then my buddy with it up. <laughs> So did this happen after the fart or before? Yeah, it was after. It was after. So, so but it, it all like, happened the same night. Yeah, the same night. It was like, <laughs> like just, so you forgot like, the arm, but remember the fart. That's what I'm saying. That's where my wow. mind goes. I remember the fart. That's a fart to remember. But how? Did, <laughs> how could and an I arm forget? to remember. Yeah. <laughs> you know? arms. Uh, how could I forget that? Like. Then, but as she's telling it, like, I, I mean, she goes, do you remember that arm coming around me and grabbing me? And it was like, like I said, a flood of memories. As soon as she said that, it was like everything came back to me. Wow. So there in my brain somewhere. She did, barely had it. And then we just were laughing the whole time. Wow. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When she's with you and she said, and the, and the words come out of her mouth, do you remember? Did you think she was going to say the fart <laughs> or no? <laughs> do you remember the fart that I blew? <laughs> No, because I forgot, you know, even when we were together, like, I remember, because she, I remember being on trips with her and her brother and parents and everything else and, and whatever. She's married. Like, she's a, she's a bit slightly older than you, like a year, maybe two older than you. So all within the same range. And she's been married for years and has kids and whatever. I just assumed she was going to remind me of, of a memory from a trip. I didn't know where she was going for it with it specifically. She mentioned St. John's. So then I started laughing. Because I already was like going to tell her the fart story. <laughs> Unless it was her that blew it. No, it. I knew it wasn't her. And oh, okay. so I did tell it afterwards. But I'm like, I can't, I can't compete. But it's the same night. And then this is what happened. And then she 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 said the next day she was laughing. She goes, she woke up laughing about the fart. I said, I woke <laughs> up laughing about the arm. Right. Sure. Of course. Wow. So I didn't. To answer your question in a really roundabout way is no, I didn't know she was like, I didn't think she was going to talk about the fart. I didn't know what story she was going to tell. <laughs> but, oh, Do you think possibly <laughs> the guy with the arm was also the one that farted? No. <laughs> it's not possible. No. Okay. I smelt the fingers of the... Of the, the, the yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. So, that, that stick came out totally wrong. <laughs> so legitimately, though, the guy was trying to sexually harass her with a prosthetic arm? Well, How could he yeah, even get anything out of it? You can't if, feel if it. You want to, so funny it's enough, like poking a tit with a stick. At all. Like if you, when you think about it now, not even today's day and age, in any day and age, yeah, it's actually very serious. But her reaction, because it came around, I think he was trying to scare her or, or, or whatever. I think he was he was trying to be a goof, but I don't think he meant to grab. Like, he was a perfect not, stranger? It's just like, it was like a, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Not part of a group. None of but nothing. Only a local. And okay. whatever, I think he just meant to droop, drape it over. But he, 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 that's <laughs> why her, her reaction was like, because she didn't know who it was at that yeah. point. Her reaction was like, what's this on? Like, so she pulled it, not really, but when she pulled it, it came <laughs> right off. I don't, and again, guys, I don't know why or how it came right off, but it did. And it, and he did only have one arm. Like, uh, work, right. work, you know, that just was a prosthetic arm. I, right. you know, but yeah, uh, but you're right from a, from a, like, seriousness issue that i mean you can't really laugh at that but i again don't know what his attention was and plus we're talking about 2012 uh and but i wouldn't play with my arm that way anyway like i wouldn't put it even as a joke with not to a man not involving a breast nothing sexual nothing i wouldn't i wouldn't do tricks with that arm because why what if something goes wrong such as that i i like you know like it's like i say i protect everything i, I baby everything well i'll tell you what if i had a prosthetic limb i'd baby the fuck out of it i wouldn't be fucking using it f for things unless i had well, to. i mean you know? and that's it i think she felt bad even retelling the story because she chucked the arm and she even said she goes <laughs> she, she chucked it went four i'm like well you can't be mad based on what he did but well, right. again oh nobody got we're hit about, we're talking whether right or wrong we're talking about all this happening within like seconds of like this thing, you're just standing there enjoying a, a band, and then this thing happens. You're like, "What the fuck?" This arm gets tossed, and he was pissed. And like, then, like, you see the arm crowd surfing back. Uh, I mean, it's fucking like just that visual. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm oh, sweating wow. with that story. It's a great <laughs> I one. It took us all. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, what a story! And like I said, totally forgot. <laughs> Unbelievable.
Unfucking yeah. believable. Wow, what a thing to happen. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't top that story. Holy shit. Yeah. That, that's amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, I thought I'd share it. I was like, wow. You know what? That's. And we got a lot of it now, and now it's now it's firmly. I don't think I'll forget it now. Well, <laughs> so when we make our movie, that should come into play. But that that scene should be in it because people like stupid comedy like that. Seriously, I feel like, like that's been in something, eh? Like where they grabbed something that was a prosthetic arm. What movie is that? And it crowd surfed. I don't know. Dark that's Dark Man isn't his leg. His leg's a machine gun. I think it was something else. I think it was. Uh, I don't well, think that's what's what I'm his thinking. Name? Cherry Darling, fucking, you know, with, with her machine gun in fucking Planet Terror. You know? Yeah. But no, he, is, he took it with the prosthetic leg, he pop, popped it off, and then in Dark Man, I think that was a gun too. But yeah, that's not, I don't think that's what I'm thinking about. But anyway, yeah, crazy shit. Wow. See, yeah, we should, we got to put that in the movie. The same fucking scene too. Well, the fart. <laughs> well, the fart too. See, someday, someday we have the money and, and we. You know, we got a budget. Up there, it's just me and my buddy on the dance floor. The floor cleared. And it's just us like, you, you. <laughs> like back and forth. On a, just, I could just try to see that visual if you're standing around watching right. it. <laughs> a fart cleared the dance floor. Man, I can't even Where? imagine. Except for us. <laughs> we were well, like, yeah. And then there's nothing we... funnier than a fart. Really, at the end of the day, there's nothing funnier. Yeah, but I'll tell you, I don't want no st- something that gross fucking in, in my nostrils. That's for sure. That it was that bad that it cleared the floor. Oh, you'd that's think it was a stink bomb, like that someone threw a stink bomb down. Which one of the- it could have possibly been. Like the girls were the old, they were the ones in their immediate vicinity. But I can't imagine. I I'm pretty sure it was a good old school fart. Whew. I tell you, I I knew the, the story I have about a fart. I can't believe some this happened. There was three. I wasn't even there. It was my buddy, and he was the two other guys, right? <laughs> right. But you know, the, it's good. I wasn't even there, and I got a story about a fart. <laughs> it's not even that big a story, but it's a gross fucking thing that happened. But they were. It was a sleepover. They were. They, we were kids. You know what I mean? There was there's three guys in a tent, fucking camp in the night, whatever the fuck, in someone's backyard. Well, somebody blew a fart. Right. The fart was so bad that fucking they threw up and. <laughs> The person that, that blew the fart themselves threw up. Think about that. If your own fart could make you throw up. Usually your own farts don't smell as bad as other people's <laughs> farts, right? So yeah. think about that. How bad that must have been for your own fart to make you vomit by the smell of it. There must have been drinking been able... happening or something. No? They were too no, young no. to be drinking? They were too young to be drinking. They probably eating potato chips and fucking candy and whatnot. You know, They were just being kids, 12 years old or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but still... Puking, yeah. vomiting from a fucking a fart that stinks. I've never done it. I've never heard of it happening. But apparently that <laughs> night, according to legend, that's what, that's what happened. And to all our female listeners, does this stuff make you laugh or disgust you? Male <laughs> listeners as well. I I again, I just bunch all guys. Again, sexist or not, I don't know. All guys thinking that farts are hilarious, and all women thinking that farts are disgusting and not so funny. However. My wife thinks a fart is funny, depending on the circumstances well, or whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. No question, she'll laugh. She'll laugh. So I want to see what the I get a get a. We'll put a poll out. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think of all farts? <laughs> funny or not? <laughs> but there's a whole. It's funny because there's a whole backstory because I've known this guy since like kindergarten. So there's a whole backstory of like fart comedy throughout our childhood. And and whatever as well that when oh. we were definitely not I was in my thirties when this <laughs> happened. Like it's Are you great. kidding me? I got fart comedy my whole life because I used to blow <laughs> farts like fucking mad when I was a kid, real bad because I had a fucked up stuff. Have you ever done a Blue Angel? I, I don't know. Where you where you take a lighter and fart? And oh the flame. no, I haven't. I, I was always afraid to bring a, a flame near my ass or. My yeah. ass. <laughs> you thought. The whole thing would catch up fire. I just don't like want to... Eternal combustion. I'm not taking a chance down there. That's all I'm saying. But well, one time, <laughs> my brother and I and friend used to always wrestle. Lots of wrestling, wrestling with big league. We wrestle with each other, rough housing, this and that. You know, fucking horseplay, whatnot. And my father, you know, it, it was, it, you know, it's a true three story house. So whatever the fuck, my father, the family room was downstairs, and my bedroom was basically 
on top of where my father would sit in his fucking recliner and, and do his stuff and whatnot. So um, he would always get mad. You know what I mean? Because we were wrestling. We were downstairs wrestling. My brother and I were wrestling. You know, and they would basically yell, you know, stop wrestling, whatever. And my father didn't give a fuck what I did when I was a kid as long as I didn't make noise. All my father wanted was peace and quiet. As long as I did, was quiet, I could have been fucking dissecting fucking bodies upstairs. Uh, he probably wouldn't have said a word, okay? Yeah. He just wanted quiet. So, <laughs> so now... <laughs> That's how serial killers are born, actually. Right. Shut up up there. Dad, I'm sawing a fucking head off here. Do it quieter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, all he wanted was quiet. So... <laughs> I'm up. So one day I was sitting there, me and my friends are over watching movies or whatnot. There was like, you know, three or four of us there hanging out. And I, I ripped the fart Sorry. and I was sitting on the floor. Right. <laughs> so it was a thunderous fart. <laughs> okay. And it goes through the floor. My, <laughs> it's so loud that my father is downstairs. And after I blew the fart, he said, stop wrestling up there. He said, <laughs> <laughs> to this day, it's discussed. Stop wrestling up there because I, from a fart. Imagine how loud that was. <laughs> I, again, it, it all starts again. I guess it's just boyish humor that yeah. you just uh, never outgrow. But it started with my, with my dad. My dad actually had a, a, a an issue, uh, but he would make it fun because it was. You want to talk about deadly farts? My dad was the king of deadly farts. <laughs> And you'd always have them because I don't know. Back in the day, everybody had matchbooks. We had a matchbook collection in this little like uh, the little beer ones? stein. Like uh, yeah, uh, the little like well, you got matches everywhere. You don't get them much anymore. You can never find them anywhere now. But you, before you go to a restaurant, you get a pack of matches True. Uh, on your way out. Yeah. It just was the thing that uh, you went to a hotel, pack of matches. Like yeah, it was with a logo something, on it. Yeah, with a logo. So it was just yeah. it was like instead of a business card, you got a pack of matches. Uh, I don't know why that was the case, but it was the case back but then. But it's true. And yeah. so we kept, we collected them all. And so he, you just knew when he would get up quietly from his chair and go over to the beer stuff, open it up and pull out the matches. That's something bad happened. And then he, so he lit and it. He just let the flame go, blow it out, let the smoke kind of kill the odor that was oh. there. But I, as a kid. <laughs> oh, I thought you light, were going to say, wait a minute. I thought you were. Your father lit his no. farts. No, 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 no. Okay. He didn't light his farts. Okay. He was. He just did it where he lit the match. <laughs> Sorry. To let I the flame it. and the smoke oh. kind of dissipate the, the wretched smell of death. But when I, it would make it would make me laugh. It'd bring joy to me, <laughs> knowing to see him going and reaching for the matches. <laughs> and sometimes you'd be like Christian, and I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'm like, Dad, <laughs> oh. out. That's the shit. Those are the that's the shit you miss. Like that stuff is just fucking gold to me. Wow. But so then I, I someone told me about this Blue Angel thing, and I never believed that. I thought it was just a joke, but it works. And it, I've done it, and I did it at university a couple times, and it it works. But I remember prepping for one. And I was wearing was this this uh, night uh, not nightgown but um, robe. You know, you get out of the shower, blue robe. Uh, I wasn't naked. It's just I was wearing a robe. It was just what I did. I was like fucking Hugh Hefner back in the day. And hey, so then I'm, I'm flicking, okay. I'm flicking the lighter. Like going, hey Jonas, come on! I got a fresh one. He's like getting out of this room. Like it was a fucking. We're, we're fucking in our twenties. Like I mean, come on. Yeah. But he was he was coming out to see a blue angel, and I flicked it and it lit and it caught the lint on my robe and it just went like whoosh, this flame just went like oh like, like pulling the robe up and it didn't catch on totally on fire but it was enough of a like a, an effect that the flame came right up and went across and came up like that like he's like oh fuck like it could have been i guess bad i don't know yeah. how it spread it wasn't like no unless i've maybe farted in that <laughs> <laughs> that robe, and it Maybe. but it was crazy. So then, ever since then, I've been very more like that was kind of like the wake up call. To like, hey, and I wasn't even doing anything crazy. I was just flicking the lighter. Yeah, right like no, it is just wow. So, anyway. Imagine if something bad did happen though. Imagine if yeah. you would have caught fire and something happened, and maybe it led to some other fire in the fucking room you were in and yeah. whatnot. And now think our, about it. It was our residence. Well, yeah. Well, okay, it's your residence. Now think about this. What if something would have happened and it would have become a fucking a news story? You would have had to say this all happened because of a fart. <laughs> I tried to light my fart, and <laughs> unfortunately, you, I set the whole fucking residence on fire. Could you imagine that happening though? Because it yeah. could have. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Good thing it didn't. And that well, would be my life. That would right? be my life. That would be on my resume. <laughs> fart, fart decimates resident. Fart knocker. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. him. Fucking fart knocker Christian. That's what they call him. Or fart lighter. You know? Oh, then anyway. you could be fire starter. That could have been your song. Fucking from, uh, you know, from Prodigy. I'm the fire starter. Twisted yeah. fire starter. And then fucking you be singing it. You could have made a video lighting farts. Yeah. I like that album. That's a good album. Oh, oh I, Fan of the Land? It's fucking yeah. front to start to finish. It's fucking great. Yeah. yeah. See? Is there. I had I had their album before and after. Yep. That was like Lightning in a Bottle album. You know, like there's a few bands yep. that just have 100%. that album that it just boom and it's and it's great. Like, dude. Anyway, somebody, somebody had me. Not they didn't have me. Not too long ago on Facebook, maybe a year ago, somebody posted something that said, um, something about what would you consider a perfect album? And they put like five there. But let me tell you what. I ended up making a list. I, I don't know how many I fucking have. I'm going to write in Fat of the Land and see if it comes up. Fat of the Land. Let's see here. Because, it, honestly, that is one that I would consider. Uh, Fat of the Land. Okay. Okay. These are how many albums. I'll show you this is the start, right? Yeah. Uh, and how oh, many? Yeah, wow. fucking... Okay. Well, I mean... Now, hold on. Oh, shoot. How many did I fucking make? Because I literally, I'm going to say, I, I'm not even going to count, but I'm going to rifle through this thing and say that I have about 80 albums that I wrote down, and, and, and I kept the rule. I can't have multiple albums from the same band. So I would pick one. Otherwise, I, there's there's five Beatle albums I could have picked. Okay. So I, 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 I can do that. I like that. Like saying, what could it be? Like uh, mine would be Blood Sugar Sex Magic from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It, but even that album, it's on there? Is it there? Yeah. See, okay. and, but let, let's be honest. I will even argue, though, that album's a little too long. Maybe two tracks too long. Agreed. But I love the album. I, and it, it, it would be on my list, no question. 100%. 100%. I fucking... So I, I don't know if, if I just love music more than everybody else or I give more things a pass. I don't think so. I ultimately do think that every fucking... That I can listen to all these albums front to back and there's fucking every track... Matter of fact... Last night, well, I can't because I already had What's 19. Stone Temple Pilots one, purple or core? Purple. Purple. Although exactly. I agree, I agree. I, it has an age. Core's right there. What's that? Core, core is right. It, it's almost right there, but purple. I think yep. it's just from total accessible to like from 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 front to back, as you said earlier. Mm. I think yeah, and but your core core is the second place, and then it's like they got. It's not that they got too experimental. Everything else is like. Tiny music or whatever. I love tiny, tiny music. The third one, I, yeah. I, I I really like it. Love might be strong. I really like it. It, it feel, felt a bit of a departure, which is fine. I like when they when they try right. something different. Um, four. Number four was I good. Think, Solid. Sour Girl. I love Sour Girl. Oh I yeah. Can't remember everything else from the album. Oh really? Oh down the first <laughs> song. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. It opens up with down. It's fucking great. And and um, yeah. church on Tuesdays and fucking Pruno uh, and, and, and Atlanta and it was oh, it also, oh but dirt is a okay. fucking masterpiece. So you, dirt. So funny enough, dirt is there. I like Jar of Flies. Their EP. Oh, I mean, that's a perfect. That Jar of Flies. It's short. I would, but yeah. It's not even that short compared to what they True. do today sometimes. Like, it's not, I mean, I get it. It's an EP. They even call it an EP. That, from right. front to back, is almost a perfect album as well. It's, it's awesome. I it's I love that album. But Dirt, Dirt is right there, too. I, I, I'll tell you this, and this is going to be controversial. I believe that Dirt is the best album ever to come fucking out of all Seattle bands. That's how high I am on fucking Dirt. Interesting. But I am a huge... Lane Staley, Mark, huge. I think the guy, I think, I don't know. I don't think there was a better voice for our fucking generation. I really don't. See, they say that, they say that, oh, they were a glam metal band that then took advantage or was remarketed into grunge. And I'm like, maybe that, maybe that's true, but Mm. their their voice and their style were already kind of there. And again, if you're talking about what was the metal, did they have an album before Facelift? No, they not as oh. Alice in Chains. They weren't. No, no. And, and facelift. I mean, right. Man in the Box. Great album too. Facelift. Yeah. You know, not dirt I mean, level, track, but it's fucking that track's amazing. Too. Well, oh they just, boy. 
progressively like they that there was a just it just felt like they were growing you forget every album it seemed even grind grind i i really like i don't love but i really like great stuff uh, so anyway we can get into music like when we, we could music- that's the thing i need a music podcast too because but seriously i probably have about 80 albums here and again and i left fucking groups i left them off because I, I just I, I picked led zeppelin four again i could have picked fucking five led zeppelin albums uh yep. van halen last night i listened to van halen one oh, front man. to back for the first time in a while and i was like fucking marveling at how great it was and I a, but again i, I chose one, what's that 19, i think it had to choose choose 1984 See, only because of nostalgia Dude. oh and panama again i always say oh. panama just like I say, Rocky Four is the greatest American movie ever made. I mean, look. it's like Panama is the See greatest. It? It's Van Halen 1984 yeah. it should be there, yeah. right? That was my choice. But Raising last... Hell agreed. Oh, hey, fuck. I thought we did this before, and you picked the album before Raising Hell because it was funny because you said because I was King of Rock. Years. See, and Raising Dude. Hell was mine, and Power for Ice T was mine. When we oh, talked yeah. before, and yours was uh, uh, Ryan Pace, this his Ryan first Pace. album. Yeah. Yeah, I believe, at least at the time. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I got so many and I could go on and on. But uh, see, that's what I'm saying. There's so many. F- and that's what made me think. The Fad of the Land was one of those albums when you said, I go, that's a perfect album. There's not many I can listen to start to finish that I fucking love every track. There are. Well, here you go. Like, like I said, right 80 there. of them. <laughs> oh, I love it. See, Van Halen 1984 was my and, pick. And if 100%. I had to pick an Iron Maiden album, it probably would be this one. Everybody Seven, loves that. I love Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. I also like Number of the Beast, but so Seventh Son of a Seventh Son is uh, is probably my favorite. I like Somewhere in Time. I don't know I why. That one too. Again, and Power Slaves. I used to have a uh, a paper route at that particular point in my life. I was like 13, I think, and I would listen 13, 14. I'd listen with my yellow Sony Walkman, mm-hmm. blaring it way too loud for my own good at the time, and yeah. listening to oh, yeah. typically Somewhere in Time and Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Over and over and over again, and it can, and sometimes uh, so far so good. So what? Megadeth. Megadeth. And of yeah. course, Van Halen. Uh, and ACDC. I can't. And ACDC. What would be your pick? Again, I guess I'd have to go back in black. Probably back in black. Back. Although I'm I'm such a Bon Scott guy over yeah. Brian Johnson that. Who the hell? Ma- or Dirty Deeds. Maybe. Cheap. Or maybe Dirty Deeds even. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that it's that's a. And could you split them because it was like two different. Let players. there be rock is another great one, with Bon Scott. Well, they, they had some great great albums that would yeah. have one or two good tra- great tracks on them, and then the rest of the album would be okay. Like yeah, ACDC, but because they had like their, I mean, now I I'm hoping they tour again. I know that they're I know one uh, uh, is Malcolm is gone right. Malcolm passed away, didn't he? Not, Malcolm yeah. passed away. I know Brian Johnson's not doing so well from the hearing side of things. Oh, uh, that's right. I heard that. Close to death, uh, if not. What? Like, uh, like uh, that's uh, from his own voice. Like, uh, from his, I think he said it himself, that he's his hearing is oh. next to nothing. Um, Damn. But it hasn't stopped them from touring. So I'm wondering if there'll be one more tour, because Christian loves them. So it'd be really good. Really? It'd be really good, because wow. that was my first major concert. I saw him twice, ACDC. The Razor's Fuck. Edge tour was my first major concert, 91. Razor's Edge. That, that was that time frame. There's Social Distortion, Razor's Edge. I think Social Distortion might have been 92. Interesting. No, I saw ACDC. The, the, their tour was, that I saw was uh, the first one was Heat Seeker or, or Blow Up Your Video, whatever it was. That one, 88 or 80, whatever it was. And then, then Razor's Edge was probably the next one when I saw them, 91, like you said. But yeah, I saw them twice. Good stuff. ACDC, you know, another, another great one is um, For Those About to Rock. The follow up yeah. to Back in Black. That's a great album too. That's a great album. That's a great song. That actually yeah. that was the that song, song I picked. Ah! Yeah, dude. Great oh, stuff. Yeah. See, I do like a lot of, of Brian Johnson's stuff. I just have a I just prefer the the presence and the voice of, of Bon Scott is all. But yeah, and I, I'm not, I'm not I, knocking. I like both. I like both. Right. Just like I at the time Van Halen? Van Halen. I like fifty one fifty. I'm not it's a totally I different do too. sound. I like I love that. It just to me, core Van Halen is David Lee Roth. 100%. And I know they had as as much, if not more success. I think they had more success with Sammy Hagar. It just happened to be that perfect timing. They came off yeah. in 1984. They got on soundtracks. And, you know, they, uh, the, yep. they just 
skyrocket from there. But I wasn't for a big fan of balance or for, for unlawful car, carnal knowledge or OU812. They, they were fine, but they weren't right. great. Agreed. Whereas 5150 of the same is, is great. Yep. Um, but I'm you with you, man. There's way too many great David Lee Roth albums, but I would have to give the edge to that. And then probably Van Halen won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 84, one. And then I have to look around and see. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, another okay. great band. As far as I'm time, concerned, course, there you go. Good. See, when, 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 when Seventh Son came out, I was I became a fan in the summer of time era. Went back, listened to Peace of Mind, listened to Number of the Beast, went and listened to Power Slave. Then became a fan, and I was there when it dropped. I was so I, I was already a fan of of um, Maiden when Seventh Son dropped. So I was invested in the band. But when it dropped, the first the single was great. Can I play with Madness? I loved it. I even had a shirt with it. But then yeah. when when I got that album the first time I listened to it and, and going back and it's always. To me, it always seemed like it was the album where they started getting really mellow as opposed to what they were doing before. Like, it was, don't you think the music is a lot slower on Seventh Son? It, it's a little to- bit more, it, it's almost like a show. It's almost, it's concept album y in a sense. Like, okay. I felt right. that, it, like, I, I hear you. You're, you're not far off. Oh, it was a it, different thing to me. Oh, wait a minute. What is it, Ministry? That, that, yeah, Ministry. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly their best. Again, wait, when is this? Psalm 69. Terrible, Psalm, Psalm 69. Psalm 69 is the one. This is a, a mine's a terrible thing to taste. Yeah, great one too. Yeah, and then there's uh, they had another one too that I really liked. I probably have it, so it's not here. Right. And then if you ever heard of the heads, not not that these different. Uh, it, no, like just I haven't songs. listened to heads. Canadian band. Canadian okay. band. I've just seen them a lot because they would play in like bars in St. Catharines quite a bit. Okay. It to be they I've heard the name a lot when I was in university, so we just uh-huh. saw them a lot. Nice. Uh, and and so they just if you if you guys like you know rock music, another right band to check out that you may have never heard of. In fact, he was also he he's an actor now. He was in um he was also in a movie that uh, um oh fuck I'm I'm forgetting the name of the movie. I'm drawing a blank on the movie. Tarantino was so impressed by his performance that I always thought Tarantino was going to use him in something. Did you see Tarantino? First of all, what about Tea Party? You like Tea Party? That's yeah, a big another, Canadian. another great Canadian yeah. band yeah. as well. Okay, so at um, the time they kind of dissipated. They seem yeah. like they, there's been nothing since. <laughs> right. No, but but Tarantino recently, because I saw a posted a few places that he usually has. He's never said anything in the past, and it, he's, he's never decided they're all his children. Blah blah blah, this and that, and he 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 thinks that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is his best movie. Which I found interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because I liked it, but I I wouldn't think he would have. I don't know. I don't. So I, I again, I I, I loved it. I loved it, but I mean, I still think Inglorious Bastards and Pulp Fiction are the two that I still put on. Uh, there's so many good ones, though, man. I told you I went through it last year. It was very difficult. All I know is for sure is Death Proof is at the bottom. And again, liked it a lot. It's just my least favorite of his movies. Oh, sure. I think you you sure. agreed with that. But. Sure. No, it, it's funny because Hollywood is probably my. I, I have I have the list right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, oh, eight, God. nine. It's my number. It's my number six out of nine, or seven out of nine. Once upon a time in Hollywood, which once again doesn't mean I don't like it. <laughs> I love them all. But you know what though, I I gotta admit it might be down there for me too. I think I think mine was like something like Death Proof, uh, Jackie Brown, like from the bottom up. Death Proof, Jackie Brown, and then it might actually be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I would, I'm, I'm, Kill Bill okay. 2, then Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Again, when I'm talking about uh, Kill Bill as two separate movies. See, I don't. Like, I, I do okay, then one. if you then then which case? So does he. Be? Yeah. So. Well, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm kidding. See, I'm kidding, but that's fine. I know. That. I will have to officially put my list up because Kill Bill's then up there. If you're doing it as one big movie, then um, cool. and not separating the two, doesn't come close uh, to me. Kill Bill's for me is my is the top thing he's ever done. I've I've all, I've loved it since fucking day one. So I think I went in Glorious Bastards, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, Reservoir Dogs. Um, then I think I do. 
what am I forgetting here? Hey, uh, uh, then Django. I probably would do. Oh fuck! And then Django. Yeah. I'm big on Django. Actually. Yeah, Django. Hateful Eight. Django's, Did you say Hateful Eight? Yeah. No, not yet. It would go Django. Okay. Then I think it would go. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Then Hateful Eight. Then Jackie Brown. Then Death Proof. Proof. Excuse me. Interesting. See, we are definitely on different sides of the fence with uh, um, what do you call it? Which one did you say? Inglorious. Um, Inglorious. Yeah, because this is how Inglorious I go. Is my, what yeah. is it? Your what? What is Inglorious? My 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 probably my top one. But when again, oh wow, we're about it, uh, but Pulp Fiction is like a Pulp Fiction just happened right at the perfect time. Like Reservoir Dogs had uh-huh. already been out. I, we've talked about it. I was in film school. I was I was in high school still. No, I'm lying. I was just starting university. So it's a graduating year going into university when Reservoir Dogs hit. And then Pulp Fiction came out in first year. So, no, I, I think it was a year graduating. And then it came out. It was Reservoir Dogs was 92, correct? Probably, yeah. 92 or 93. I don't know so for it was like sure. that late part of high school. And then, because uh, first year is when, first year university is when Pulp Fiction came out. That I remember because I saw it. And it was like, right. oh, my God. And it, it was, was just, a big deal. Yeah. yeah, it was huge. And I, I love know. I didn't know about Reservoir Dogs until Pulp Fiction came out. Then people started talking about Tarantino, and then people say, you should see this movie. So it was like one of the movies that, whatever, for me, I didn't even know it was out. But I last February, when I was out with the COVID, and I watched every fucking thing. Uh, now, every one of these is the second time view. The COVID, I know. Every, every one of these is the second time view, except for Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, and hold on, Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir, and I think that, honestly, I think it's I think every uh, everything else I had only seen one time, own them yeah. all. Well, so but ultimate, so the second view with me, I was like, holy fuck, it, it really changed a lot of things. But for me, this is it. Kill Bill number one. There was never a question. Kill Bill has always been my favorite. One and two combined, I, I adore it. Um, Hateful Eight was the one that fucking jumped up. It's my number two. I only seen it once. Yeah. I was, on the second view, I was like, incredible. Pulp Fiction number three, another one that jumped way up, Django. Django is my number four. Yeah, but they're all great. Like, That's the problem. Like, I, I feel like I, I could shift them like that. Like I, I enjoy yeah. them all. Like I, I was like, this is hard to rank. <laughs> it is hard to rank. So Kill Bill, Hateful Eight, Pulp Fiction, Django, Reservoir Dogs, Jackie Brown, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Inglorious Bastards, and Death Proof. That's the ranking. Interesting. But they're all great, though. They're all fucking like an eight or above. You know what I mean? I mean, that's yeah. that's so solid for a director. It's it's ridiculous, honestly, how fucking yeah, that body um, of work. No, I mean, it's it, it, it's great. That's I mean, I, I, and I can see some people just not getting into them. Like I told you, my dad was not really a fan. He just could not. He didn't like his style. <laughs> it's different stuff. It was some. It's something to get used to. But it's, yeah, but it, it's more yeah, art generation. I'm very. I don't think he's announced his tenth film. Right, his tenth and official. Like nobody's doing a series. Left. That's what's going on here. Supposedly he's doing some series. That's why the news broke about Quentin and something mm-hmm. else, and why he said it was his favorite well, uh, Hollywood. So I don't know. I don't know. See, I didn't study because I, I, for whatever reason, um. <laughs> I didn't fucking, what do you call it? I didn't read too much into it. Let's see, Quentin, ah, Quentin Security Series, it says. What the fuck is this? I guess I got to write in Tarantino. Quentin isn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I am curious about it. Quentin Tarantino Series. Okay, let's see. Reveals plans to shoot an eight-episode TV series next year. Okay, here it is. So Tarantino is disclosed he plans to step back into television, looking to shoot an eight-episode series in 2023. The film director shared news on the project Wednesday night while performing his new book, Cinema Speculation, at a New York event. He wasn't forthright with the narrative or production details around the pro- around the project. So, Interesting. Give me one second. I'm, I'll be right back in two seconds. Yeah. But apparently he's done CSI or something, huh? Directing two episodes of CSI in 2005. Two episodes of that in, in ER. He did an episode of ER. That's, I think, where he met huh. um, or he got close with. Uh, uh, What's his, his name? Case, Clooney. In, uh, Clooney. Clooney with, from Bessel Dunn. Yeah. Uh, and again, he didn't say he was going to stop writing or producing, 
And again, TV might be his other avenue. I just wonder how long it's going to take for him before he decides what his 10th movie is going to be. Because he could be dabbling in TV for hour, like forever. I mean, let's face I... it, TV nowadays, you can do whatever you want. Like, I mean, it's come so far from the TV that we grew up with. I mean, drama shows that when we grew up with, grew up with, I don't know how I fucking can't talk, it, were boring, in my opinion. For the most part. I, 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 I mean, you had MASH, which I still didn't like. When MASH came on to me, it was a kryptonite for the TV. Like, I me never too. wanted to watch MASH. I liked the song, but the second I saw it, and it always seemed to be fucking on. Yep. But it was a kryptonite. I'm like, no, get that off the fucking TV. Couldn't agree more. And, Same thing. Hated and, it. But I wasn't alive for Vietnam. So maybe if I came through that time period, and that was the war, right? The Vietnam War, that's what it was yeah. about. Maybe. I believe so. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, it was some war. It's about the army. Anyway, but I mean, sitcoms, whether they're great, Crap. I gotta watch a lot of shit, like a lot of shitty sitcoms and good sitcoms as well. But it seemed like oh, yeah. sitcoms is what I watched. A couple of game shows because you, when you started it, like at seven or seven thirty, it'd be a couple of game shows and it would go into like Family Ties and Cosby Show and Growing Pains. Like that was the yeah. shit that I grew up with. Yep. Right. Sure. Uh, and then you started branching off into other things. You come home from school, Three's Three's Company would be on, and oh, I, I love just it. never. I know you loved it. I was like, yeah, I was hot and cold on it. Like I could take or leave it. Facts of life here and there, different That's strokes, of course, like That's that, that all those, all those cheesy uh, sitcoms. Um, but then it was They're always fun. movies. It was always movies, but like oh, those yeah. blues, like, Never I was that. just like, sounded boring, too old. Yeah. like, yeah, it just yeah. didn't, but that was like the shit that I'm going to cop blues things. St. Elsewhere and Hill Street blues. I think those are the ones that kind of started changing the landscape a little bit back in the day. Right. But it was like You're HBO right. really did kind of that's like the, uh, going sopranos. back to like sopranos sex in the city six feet under all those shows were kind of like yeah. the early adopters and they're like, hey we could do something a little bit more here and then i think it turned into what what, what we're what we've got now with your breaking bads i know breaking bad now is antiquated it's like old, old no. compar- right. compar- comparatively but i mean just like that's who would have thought that like you know a zombie show gory zombie show would have been so huge when we were kids if you I put know. money on it, we would all lost money. Yes or no? We really, just no way. No, of course not. No, course I don't not. think anybody would have put money on yes. I don't think anybody would. As a big of a horror fan as I was, I would I, I wanted would have wanted it, but there would have been like, there's just no way it's going to happen. Of course not. And it did. <laughs> and it did. Which and I was bad. just talking the other day to Frankie about, and I can't remember what we were discussing, but somehow I was just telling her, I go, well, you know, what you can show on TV now and what you could show on TV then is so much different. And I was trying to explain to her about the MPAA. I go, even now movies rated R movies in the freaking, in the late eighties, after the MPA really cracked down hard rated yeah. R freaking horror movies are, there was, there's less gore in them than there is in freaking stuff that's on TV now. Absolutely. And there's, and you'll, but remember how scary it was. I think, how yeah. do we get it? It might have even been a political discussion where we were talking about something about who cracks down on what and why and stuff like this. And I was telling him how the landscape changed in certain things. Like, yeah. oh, this, this group used to come down here and it's kind of, it just, it just goes to show you the, the it, folly it that of politics. Back in the day, right? The Republican right. Party was very much against anything gory or 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 whatever, and they seemed to, it seemed to be more aligned with family Republican. values. Yeah, family values, to, Christian. Yeah. But here's the funny thing: on top of it, on top of this, yeah. who was the head of the fucking MPAA? Who was the one, not Jack the MPAA? Valente? Who was the head oh. of the PMRC? The same thing that they cracked down for movies, they cracked down on music. And who was it? Tipper Gore, the yeah. wife. To Al Gore, who was in the office as a Democrat. And I only she, know that because of uh, the body count song, uh, KKK Bitch. <laughs> sure. You never watch those trials with D. Snyder in there, schooling yeah. her and shit? Oh, I, I, I've seen that on some of the documentaries and, and whatnot. Yeah. But it's but he great. talked about her a lot. Ice-T talked about her and his music and, and yeah. other people, and, uh, you know. But, but, but Tipper Gore. So there you go. <laughs> Isn't it weird though? Like the Republican here, they were talking about this and that and this. But then, I, then if you look at it, MPAA, and pardon me, PMRC was fucking Tipper Gore, uh, married to the Cincinnati. fucking. Cincinnati. 
<laughs> so we were just talking about different crackdowns and who focused on what and this and that and how things Death, are now. And Death I would Wish say, 4? Huh? Death Wish 4? Or is it Death Wish 3, the crackdown? Oh, I don't Did know. Did I just fuck up my own joke? I'm out. Some. If it's, it's Death Wish 3 and I said Death Wish 4, we're stopping the show. Someone's going to say something. Because people I'm like it. Now. Those Death Wish uh, things. So they cracked down on this and this and this. And I was basically talking about the folly of politics. How one time the, these these people focused on this. And now they're focused on this. And how everybody's focused on this stuff instead of the real, real problems that we're all facing as people. They're focusing on nonsense on both sides, of course. And so, But I, it got into the discussion on how censoring movies was a real big deal in my childhood. And they were talking yeah. about the war on... Because remember, everything that we were into, heavy metal, rap music, and freaking horror movies. And I was into all mm. of it. All of that was the devil at the time. All of that was going to be this terrible influence on us. Mm. And this, and I was t- t- telling her about this. This was really the way things were going on. She yeah. can't understand that. People, People that are, are her that age. Much, like, that much energy was put into yeah. it. And it was Death Wish 4, so I could continue the podcast today. So... I hope you all laughed at that and appreciate it. <laughs> Ninga, how many did they make? How many Death Wishes are there? Four in a remake? Five. Five in a remake. Fuck. The fifth one, though, was kind of like, was like came out later. It doesn't really fit that really canon feel of two, three, and four, which are just fucking bad shit. <laughs> See, the original I enjoyed. I don't think I would like the yeah. other ones. It sounds like they jumped oh, the, the shark in those. The other ones are, they did. And that's what's great yeah. about them. They're like just so fucking bad shit that yeah, I love them for that reason. Kind of we just like having this discussion at the, so at the dinner afterwards we got on the bus and the, uh, we were t- at the dinner we we're talking to this kid. This is the thing now. I remember I, we're old. I forget this sometimes when I'm talking to people. So there's a guy that's 20 years younger than me. We're having a great conversation. I bring up Jean Claude Van Damme. He's like Jean Claude who? Ah. Uh, I'm oh like yeah. okay. Let's get this. We have to have a serious conversation now. And everybody else at the table is like, you don't know who he is? And like, I mean, everybody was closer to my age, but not, like there's still some that were in between. Instead of a 20 year gap, maybe the 10 year gap. I don't expect them to know. The second we brought up the fact that he was in Expendables 2, he seemed to kind of know a little bit more about who he was. I said, well, now you got to go watch his filmography. And other people were like, no, you don't. Please don't do that. I'm like, no, you do. Watch Kickboxer and Bloodsport and leave it at that. Bloodsport, Hard Target. Come on. Forgetting Hard Target, fucking never saw a great, great, great John Woo movie that got panned mm. at the time for using too much slow mo. I think, but I love it. It's so much cheese. It's so fucking great. It's yeah. such a great, <laughs> that that one. I like that better. Like Time Cop was when he went like, uh, which <sighs> is number meme. one, and that went like like I think made a lot of money. I'm not a big fan of that one, but there's but, no way I'd like, watch a movie called that. Something Death is good, but Hard Target was great. Death Warrant was all right. Cyborg was okay. But Bloodsport and Kickboxer, like you mentioned, are... are yep. Those are the two, the first two, right? The those are the and Lionheart. How can I forget Lionheart? I love Lionheart. Never just, saw those. For me, the, the the bloom was off the rose after I saw those two. And then whatever else came next. <laughs> you know, it was okay. Now it's... I love you throw those saints in the special... For Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. The bloom was <laughs> off the rose. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we work so well together. If I do say so or so myself. Yeah, we're doing ourselves. okay. Speaking for you too. <laughs> Even if I say so for ourselves. <laughs> it's just that's it, man. It's fucking crazy. We don't even have to be in the same room. It's always bouncing off the walls. Yeah, like Lucy Ball. <laughs> yeah. I tell you. Curly was running for the fucking hills. You could just see it in her eyes. Like, are we gonna fucking put <laughs> it or what? When am I out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Well, next time she comes on, it's going to be all business, A, B. Oh, we can actually discuss that now. We can mention it before we do anything else that we, you know, the three-parter. Oh, yeah. yeah, our, yeah. Uh, you know, February, you know, February is going to be a big month because it's going to be the top 200. And uh, in three episodes. Yeah. In 3D, too. <laughs> We're making a video of us in 3D. Imagine that. <laughs> I wish we could. If we could find it. We the, the shocker. Wait. <laughs> I don't know. I, how many do you need in the stinker? <laughs> <laughs> Man, could you imagine if we could do that, though? Not a stinker, but if we could have fucking <laughs> have a 3D <laughs> show. In smell wow. of vision <laughs> Smell-o-vision, yeah. Tell that fart story. 
I'll be yeah. over there like making a putting a stink bomb in the fucking thing on the side. I would love that. That's the next. That's the next level of podcasting. That would take us from tier five to tier one, if we could like do stinkle vision and stuff like that. Like all of a sudden, this the stench comes out from your keyboard. <laughs> oh, what oh, about scratch oh, and sniff? Phone. Yeah, we can have scratch. We can we can send out scratch and sniffs once a month to all the patrons for the show, and we'll be thinking about the movies we're gonna talk about and scenes in them. You know, like in Pearl. This happened. Let's have the small of the fucking the barn yeah. that she's in with the cows and shit. They mentioned you that know? the rose joke. And then there's like a rose thing. It's scratch now. Rose smell. Anytime no, I say the... Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a rose in every single one. In case I say it again, the bloom is off the rose. You know, or someone says stop and smell the roses. You know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Just if we like, don't have uh, the money. Just like Tom motherfucking Atkins in Night of the Creeps. Wonderful. He stops to smell the room. Wonderful. <laughs> How about earlier? I said Land of the Creeps because of the podcast. <laughs> when he said, you were saying Night of the you said I wanted to say Night of the Creeps, and I said Land of the Creeps. This goes to show you I got podcast on the brain. And listen to Land of the Creeps if you don't, by the way. Greg Amortis, check it out. In company. Well, let's jump. Why don't we get into a movie, or is there something let's else you jump. want to discuss first? What can we do? Okay. No, we've already told let's in February it. it's going to be a three-part show, yeah. 75, 75, and then top 50. We're going to have different guests on each one, by the way. So it's going to be interesting. Very interesting. For sure. Lots of fun. And then we're going to take a break in March. See, right now we're coasting. This is a great time to be in this podcast. I feel so happy because right now we're just doing what we want to do, right? We're, we're, we're working up to the year-end show. We have holidays coming. Then after that, it's the top 200. So it's just kind of like it's all fun and games right now, and it's real kickback. I mean, if this is a new beginning – it's it, the new beginning is, is 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 a pretty chill, fun beginning. You know what I mean? I'll say that. It so. is a chill new beginning. Yeah. Uh, and that's a uh, uh, for anybody that has watched the YouTube one, which we know, you know, it gets watched, but I think more people listen than watch. Uh, the, the intro has this new uh, a Friday Thirteenth mask coming out, new beginning. I don't know if we actually spoke about it or if we just said check it out. Uh, and that will run until episode two hundred, and then we'll I'll change it up again. And we'll go for something for the next chunk. So we're going to start with Watcher from 2022. Not The The Watcher, Watcher. which is the show that came out with Naomi Watch. 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 (laughs) Naomi Watch. Imagine that. I'm going to get a watch (laughs) with her face on it. That's what's that. That's my Naomi Watch. Check it out. (laughs) Is it a Mickey Mouse? You got Naomi Watch with her hands moving around. You got my Apple Watch and just get a picture of her. That's my Naomi Watch. (laughs) I'm telling you, well, oh, that's a gimmick. They only watch. Oh, shit. It's not that one. <laughs> We're watching Watcher, but not the, just Watcher. And Watch. it is categorized as a drama horror thriller, which is interesting because I ca- I was getting weary of, do I want to put this on my list? I put it on my list, but the horror, admittedly, we'll get into it. Uh, I'm yes. jumping the gun here. We'll get into it. Okay. So here's the synopsis. A young American woman moves with her husband to Budapest and begins to suspect that a stranger who watches her from the apartment building across the street may be a local serial killer decapitating women. And you, know, you hear that discussion or hear that uh, description, it sounds very horror. But truth be told, that this would make Alfred Hitchcock proud, I think. Yes. Uh, this is this is a, a thriller that definitely has horror ingredients sprinkled in. Well, you see a beheading, so that's something. You, when you see yeah. a corpse with a head there, without a head there, I should say, that's yeah. that 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 pushes it into that that umbrella. But that's that's the feeling I got when I watched it. Number one, I watched it. I rated it what I rated it. That stayed the same. But I knew it wasn't going to be in in my discussion for end of year. I've had a very good year here. So, but I also felt it was very thrillerish. Just like another movie, and I don't know if you've seen this movie. It's called No Exit. Now, oh, it was on my. Is that a foreign one? I think I, I have it saved onto my. Uh, sure. Um. Uh, as a download, was it on uh, Netflix? I think it's oh, on I my iPad know. to watch it no. as a download. I watch everything on the Amazon. It looked now, like it so was I like a South Korean or, or or at least some foreign oh. movie by my memory. You can watch it on Hulu, actually. So anybody can watch it, but it's called No Exit. And let me see what uh, what, what country it's from. And see if you're right about that. I can't remember. Um, I could be totally wrong. No, country of origin, U.S. language spoken English, also known as Aho Rabja. 
So I don't know. Filming locations, Auckland, New Zealand. But no. But no. Um, but no. But the thing is this. No exit. I rated it even higher than I've rated this movie. And oh, wow. But the rating I gave No Exit would constitute it as a rewatchable movie to see if it's going to make my top 22. But when I think back on the movie, I think more of it as a thrillerish. And for that reason alone, it, it, it disqualified it from the list. And that's probably what would happen here if I if I read it. I, I got higher. I got to be honest, man. I I watched it. So I watched it, loved it, and I rewatched it and loved it. And I, I made my wife to, to watch it with me, and she I said I think you'll really enjoy it, and she did really enjoy it. And I is it would have been in my top ten, no question. But I'm thinking of pulling it because I do think it's way more thriller than it is horror. Not a bad thing, guys. It's no. definitely worth checking out. But from a top for my top horror list, I think I have to pull it, uh, which is unfortunate because it was probably number four or five on wow. my list, wow. to be honest. Yeah. Um, nice. It was, I, I really like this movie. I know I saw other people's reviews or or ratings, maybe not reviews, but ratings, and it seems to be kind of all over. I think Gary loves it. He's with me. Gary Miller, I believe, is the one that has it ranked pretty high. I think he even has it higher than I do, but I, uh, but I, I really like it. It would be a full head explosion. No question, but uh, I, I know we're going backwards here. As I know we are. As I just gave my fucking funny. rating before we even talked about the movie. <laughs> but fuck it, this is what we do on this fucking show. Uh, and no exit's not the one that I was thinking of. I I looked at the uh, the cover. I don't know what the one was that I'm thinking of, but it well, wasn't that one. Watch it. Check so, it out. I okay. want to know what you because it's good a movie. So watch it I and tell me if you list. think it would constitute as horror, and then I might reconsider and watch it again because. I left it out for that reason, but I only saw it the one time. But just when I look back on it, I'm like, maybe, maybe not so much. But I'll tell you what, well, this movie here is something. Well, I guess we'll wait till we get to the end because if something would have happened at the end, a couple of things would have happened at the end. I could have had different ratings if one of two things or either of those two things happened. I, bet I know exactly what you want, and I think it's exactly what my wife wanted. And it, two things. Uh, it, yeah, and we'll get to that too because there's no point in speculating and then and okay. dancing around it, but. I love the lighting here. I love the performances here. I love how you're made to be put into, is it Micah? Am I saying her name right? I think Mi so. Mika? Micah M Monroe. Yeah, I, I love how you're put into her shoes. Like yep. they know subtitles. Like right. you're you're put into her shoes of, of, of being uh, a U.S. citizen coming to, um, to uh, where are they? Rom Romania and- Bucharest, yeah. Yeah, Bucharest. What did I say? Uh, whatever. But Romania yeah, anyway. Uh, and and not knowing the language. And she's trying to learn it. And it, it's funny because she's practicing as she walks and listens and is listening to things, which which yeah. plays into it later on, where she kind of pieces together something that's joked about. Uh, and it, it's at her expense and her husband's oh, right. part of it when they're at that table. And I thought that was a nice touch, too, because my wife was like, when you think that they're just making fun of you, like she goes, that would be so unsettling. I'm like, that's what I love about this movie. The director does a great job. She, I think, wrote and directed this, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I just love her. Now, I know she maybe had a say in the lighting, of course, but that's more the director of photography. But the movie's lit beautifully. It looks great. I love the camera angles. It's very Hitchcockian in the sense of, like, uh, almost kind of a rear window-esque type thing. Voyeurism is a big theme in Hitchcock. And, again, it, it's played out in this as well. You don't know if it's just paranoid delusion. If she's just paranoid being in the stranger in a strange land to bring back Iron Maiden. Uh, there you go. But everything just sort of gels with me. I, I like the way it played out. Now, there are some things that can raise questions and I, maybe this is why people lower their marks for it. Like, it seems like it's a little too on the nose based on the police investigation that he would actually target her or her friend. But if he's really sick, and maybe he just likes playing with his victims. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, he's already been outed as like some a, a person of interest, but mostly it's her paranoid. They, the police and her husband think it's just Micah's paranoid delusion in that sense. Yeah, but or listen, though, they don't get targeted. Well, okay, from afar there's a target, but it doesn't touch into what's going on with her and her friend directly, as far as in the physical realm, until he. I want to say, if I'm following the timeline correctly, until he's challenged, until the police, we don't see the first time that they go over there and they meet the guy, the police and the husband. 
You know what I mean? They go over there. So I'm guessing that they went over there. And then he says, okay, now this person's on to me and now something else. And now I'm going to find out. I'm going to deduce by what I'm doing here what apartment this is exactly. And then take it from there. And then spy on it and stuff. Who's to, why, why? That's not so unbelievable to me. No, no. I, 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 I like the Unless movie. it's out of order. I love the movie. I'm just saying, no, no, no. I think it was that that they went, they saw him. But I'm just saying at the end means, so he goes into the neighboring apartment and does what he does to the the, the neighbor yeah. that we find out. So they're in there. He's in there. He's in that. He's in that. Uh, they come looking at the apartment and, and they think it's just the cat. I think that's when they find the cat. Right. Yep. And then they come out. Mm-hmm. He's in there and he's already done what he needed to do. But I'm just thinking, so is he playing with her at that point? Because he seems like he's putting a spotlight on himself. If because there's already been she's creating a ruckus she's already pointed a finger at this guy being creepy by there they they've got him on video and they they've kind of i guess what i'm saying is the husband is is undermining her and the police officer is as well so i think that's the explanation is is, yeah. is that it's just all in her head and it, it's not the you know the same person and they think they caught the guy because of this crazy something that this guy had he was convicted of of rape or something else. And, and he was the one that found the victim and they, so they thought it was him. And so they already think they've caught the guy when it wasn't, uh, when it wasn't him at all. You know, maybe he did it. Cause if he do sit down and think of why would he target the neighbor? That's true. Is he doing it to mess with her? Possibly. Maybe he's just mad because of what happened. So well, since I can't get at you, I'm going to get to this one, but how does he know that they're friends unless he's followed them and saw that, Something well, he's been other. watching. He's been watching. Right. You can see into both both apartments. So uh, maybe it's just that she's the one that's noticed. I'm just saying that, like, then to then be killed in her apartment, wouldn't the husband instantly say, "Oh my God, it's the guy across the, the street." My wife called this. I mean, when... we do get that. We do get that because he sees the guy come out of the apartment, which he thinks is weird because the husband hears the phone ringing in there. And it's his wife's phone is in the, the neighbor's apartment. So when he goes out to come out, the killer walks out and they see each other and he just zips up his coat and is about to walk away before uh, a shot rings out. And it's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful shot because it comes out of nowhere and it's just loud and it's just startling. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, right. and and I know we're again, I know we're jumping all over the place, but I said it's to get to that final look of when she comes out the doorway and looks at her husband with that exact same expression and that exact same look on her face that the her friend said you don't want to have of of being killed and right. being right. And she was pretty much dead. This is just like the uh, movie magic, if you will, where she didn't bleed out, but she was left for dead and then ends up coming uh, and, and, and killing her killer. But then gives her husband that I told you so look at the end. Yeah. Well, the slice of the throat when it happened and Frankie said the same thing that I was thinking. She goes, well, she goes, the way that slit, she goes, I don't know if, it, if it's a slit throat, if that's going to kill her. And I thought that at the time, too, I'm like, because it wasn't directly across. It was closer to the one side. You know, it wasn't yeah. the jugular or whatever the fuck. So as I'm watching, I'm like, okay. But then the amount of blood that does come she out. It bleeds like, out. Yeah. Okay. So this yeah. is what's happening. And this is going to happen. And again, getting to what I said earlier, if the movie would have just simply ended like that, just because it's unconventional, right? And because we follow yeah. this person the whole time, we care about this person, we, we see what's happening here. Oh, and I thought she in was this dead. day and age... <laughs> Yeah, it would have been something because we've seen this trope many times before. Listen, listen to your to your lover, your your spouse, whatever. Take them seriously and and don't undermine it and don't try to rationalize things. Try to look at it more from their perspective. And, you know, anybody can be a victim. So I was thinking if they could have ended it that way. And wow, what a tragedy, because we care about her. That would have been something that, again, you've heard me say this before, years from now, people would be talking about the end of that movie. It would be remembered like the end of Funny Games. People if remember he just the walked funny away, games zipped up his end. coat and walked away. And then we see her. And, and then and then, or, or, and then he, and then the husband comes around and then looks in and you see her just dead on the floor. Yes. And, and you could still have, 
it's not necessarily the look. She gives him the look, but she still has the look on her face that could be read as I told you so, in a sense. But she's dead. It's just her dead, her, her dead look, <laughs> and then dead look. it ends. Either I that, agree. I agree. Right? That yeah. would it, it would have been higher up for me. It would have been in contention for the list if that if it ended that way. Is that what your wife said, or did she, or is it something else? Because I have another one. No, but then so that's where I thought it was going to go. Not okay. I got with, another one with with the look. The other one was that if he wasn't the guy at all, but the guy wasn't caught and he ha- helps her. So the guy that's been watching her the whole time ends up being her savior. Because he's been watching her the whole time. That's what she yeah. thought it was going to take a turn. We've that seen way. that before, haven't we? What was that? Yeah, I, I feel like it has happened. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Uh, um, she what was. Where? She didn't say that escalated it. She liked the movie for what it was and what we got. Right. She just thought that because of how much blood they showed coming out, that was its only misstep. She says, "I don't." The slit was fine because, as Too Frankie much. pointed out, right. that made sense. But she bled out and died. We watched. She. We pretty much watched her die in front of her. It and again, this is why I say movie magic, where he sits. Well, and, it, it supposes he's done with it. He, he, the guy's been slicing off heads left, right, and center. He knows when someone's dead, and so then he he's about to leave. So he's 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 about to leave, and then she's not dead. So I, I get it. Like again, but I think it would have. You're right. It would have resonated more had she actually died, which is what I thought was happening anyway. I'm not going to say I didn't dislike him getting shot dead because the way the body slumps down, I also thought was really kind of cool. Two shots, mm-hmm. not right in the head, like you always expect. And then her just stumbling out and giving her husband the I told you so look without say, without giving her the I told you so look. Well, here's the and other it, one. It backs up the theme kind of of, but you could have gotten that back up anyway by her being dead and her husband seeing it and, and whatever. So I'm I'm torn. Well, this could have been even better. How about this one? I like the fact that she faked it because we, we talk about this all the time in my house. Pretend you're dead. That's how you get yeah, away. And I've talked true. about it before in other movies. Sometimes people pretend they're dead to let their killer get away so they can escape. She 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 gave a performance pretending she was dead. I can accept that. That's awesome. Now, here, imagine if this. Imagine if she gets up. The husband comes home. She shoots the fucking killer. He comes over. Now, she has the gun, of course. You know. The guy comes down. The husband comes over, looks at her. She gives him that look, raises the fucking gun, and fucking shoots her husband dead in the fucking credits roll. That would have been a fucking ending right there. That's what I said. <laughs> really? Oh, I, that she was... flipped her fucking lid and killed the son of a bitch. Nobody would have saw that coming. And you'd remember it forever. Don't you think? <laughs> Come on. You would have, yeah, you would have remembered it forever, but I think it would have negated everything, uh, some of the, the setup for that. Like, they didn't really... It wasn't a... They, they put their relationship seemed good it yeah, just fine. got yeah. strained as as work took a hold of him and and the amount of time he was away and whatever so i don't know that would have been more fish out of the water i would have preferred her just really dying, I no think. shit wow i would have loved to fucking yeah i mean i still really ass. enjoy what we got well, it's I do still too. satisfying to me but i i i think of that and i i i think that, like that's a hitchcock and that's kind of like that vertigo ending almost like He's just standing there looking at his dead wife, and 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 then it just the camera's just like at a high angle looking down at them. That could have been a powerful ending. Yeah, and that too. Slam cut to credits. Like again, but, but what we got, I'm very happy with what we got. And, but it was a moment. I, when when sorry? the gunshot came, it was a moment though. Like when fucking you thought yeah. she was dead, and they went yep. over here, and and then all of a sudden you see the gunshots. My wife fucking applauded. She was fucking happy to see it. So that's a moment, you know what I mean? After yeah. everything, because my my my, my oh. wife was motherfucking the guy through most of the movie. Not 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 the killer, the husband for not really? believing in this and that. Yeah, well that and, it, you know it, it, it's kind of about that not victim blaming, but like I mean I think it, no. again it's part of that whole sort of culture of like he even right out of the gate says maybe. Like that that line of his was maybe he's just maybe he's staring at the woman staring at him. Like pretty right. much out of the gate, say like, I mean, you're no you're not innocent in this either. You're like wa- watching him and whatever, and you're just like, oh, like it it's so weird because we're we're given a pretty good we're in her shoes. Like I said before, we're put in Stranger in the Strange Land again, the language barrier. Everything else, I think they did a great job with that. Her trying to learn the language, her running into this, the guy serving yeah. her coffee and saying, oh, I like your accent, and just innocent, whatever. Her just getting up, as the progression happens, her getting paranoid and just this random guy walking behind her freaks her out a little bit. And these are the feelings that you have 
even when you're not necessarily, you just might be walking home alone at night or alone whenever and have these thoughts and feelings that we're not maybe accustomed to at all. But then you add being in a, in a strange land, it just escalates it even more so. Yeah. And this guy's looking at, at her and staring her down. And in his apologies, rather, that whole scene on that subway yeah. is oh, really no. creepy. Do okay. you think her head was in there? And does he carry her, that head around everywhere he goes then? Because where would he be taking that head if he's... But I okay. think that's the creepiest part of it, and the fe- fixation she has on that. A couple things about that scene. Number one, the first time I saw it, leading up until the end, I bought it. The way he said it, and he goes this and this, and then blah, blah, blah. And then I waved, and that was okay. And then he goes, and then, then you wave back. So then I just thought... Oh wow! Some I, I made a friend. I, it's a sad hobby I have. I look out the window. I take care of my father. To yeah. me, That's I was great. believing him. It was good. I was like, "Holy shit! Okay, she is mistaken here. He's really not doing this. He's lonely. He's going through this. Maybe he thinks she's attractive or whatever." But again, the still the thing in the beginning at the theater. If someone sits directly behind you in a fucking theater where there's six people in it, me as a fucking man, if someone if someone did that to me, I'd fucking get get, get leave probably. Why would someone sit directly behind you when six people are in a fucking 100 seat theater and they oh, sit? Yeah. And something's Pretty wrong there. Thing. So yeah. I mean, as a female, I'm 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 weary. As a fucking man, I'm fucking I don't want that either. I'm like, okay, this is a little bit odd to say the least. Yeah. So, but whatever. But when he gives his explanation, I was like, okay, I was like, okay, I'll make. Then at the end, okay, it's a little weird. She says, I'm sorry. But let me ask you this: Did you know what was in the bag? Did you see it? Because no. my wife no. saw it all. But, but it feels like the first time I you you just your mind goes like her mind like is that a fucking head in the bag is that a head in the bag this time it does look like there's an impression of a of a like you could see the the eye and the nose almost outlined in the bag or again I don't know if it's just my mind no it, it is thank you okay Irene saw it all and, and Frankie and I didn't see it at all again. I'm watching a movie forgetting how it ended, and I just think it's fucking groceries, and I'm not thinking anything of it. And she goes, she goes, there's a head in that bag. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, yeah. and then she knew, she even knew whose head it was. She described it. She goes, look, you can see this here, you can see. I'm like, you can see all that in that bag. She's like, yes, I'm telling you, there's a head in that bag, and that, and she knew whose head it was and everything. I was like, what the fuck? Then when we get to the apartment at the end, and she's beheaded, I was like, holy yeah. shit, you fuck. Oh, that that reveals the, is what makes it horror like that reveal is right just like i said and, and my wife's mouth dropped as did mine the first time i saw it i looked over that 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 was the giddiness of like of watching it with someone that hadn't experienced it yet and i turned and then she was like like it's yeah. just such a great fucking like sick reveal just the way the body it's like right a, a henry portrait of a serial killer almost and then like the head mm-hmm. clean off and everything but once again the movie the movie itself uh i I was like upset a little bit because I said, I'm going to have to probably pull this. Like, I know we always say if it's horror to you, put it on the list, but it's a thriller movie that happens to have a really, a really horrific ending, which again, lots of thriller movies do. And I I love it. I love it. I'll rewatch it. And that's all that matters. Uh, uh, But I'm going to have to take it off my, my list. (laughs) And and then see that I did the same thing with no exit. So yeah. it's going to be the same thing. But again, maybe watch it and tell me if I'm wrong. I'm just going by memory. But I was also going by memory this time. And when you said this was the movie you wanted to pick to watch for possible consideration, I'm like, okay, now I have another reason to watch the movie. This is great. Now let me see. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is more horror than I remembered it as. But I, I remember my impression after the first time saying, well, I, I, I did enjoy it. This, that, the other thing. But th- the same feeling as you just surmised. Yeah. So I felt the same thing. But, you know. But but, uh, but well I, worth I, checking I out. Well worth checking oh. out. Like everybody watching, yes. it's on Shutter. If you don't have Shutter, then I think you can just rent it regularly. Uh, but uh, it's on Shutter for free. And again, this is the other thing about uh, being on Shutter. You just it's almost like, uh, like uh, like from a psychology standpoint, you almost you know, well, it's on Shutter. It's got to be a horror then. But this is what well, we've been oh, saying. No. They've been putting years, a lot of these. Haven't. They've been right. putting a lot of these like kind of ones that like mm-hmm. there was that um, flux one that I talked about the one with the digestion thing and it. everything else. I'm like, ah, it's, I mean, it, it, it's so borderline that it, it's very difficult to 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 classify. Even that uh, what uh, jo- Joiza? What about the saw? old man one you were talking about? Yeah, Nocturna. Again, I didn't bother with it. 
I, I, and again, it's not that I rewatched it, but again, I really, I enjoyed it. I said, I felt really bad for that old man and he's mm -hmm. such a great performance from him. But again, it's more dramatic with horror yeah, elements to it. So I'm um, not gonna. So it's, it, and that, what Joe, uh, Joe Isa saw, what is, what, what was that? That one played again. No, the. Josiah, this, oh, I, think, I thought it was yeah. horror. I definitely thought, well, Supernatural was fucked. There was things still going on in it. I thought it was, yeah. I don't know. I took that as a straight up. I like I, I liked that, but I I, I, I maybe I'll have to rewatch it. Oh, that because... supernatural shit going on! Don't you remember the fucking tarot cards and they and they and there was a couple different things because the way it's set up, but there was like you know two different supernatural scenarios that for a fact happened. So yeah, I will have to give it a. I consider a, it a rewatch. I like that. I, I, I really like that. It was a well made movie. Uh, as oh, I said, yes. it's one of the best directed scenes. I, I, I from a from a smaller, lower budget standpoint, I thought it was a standout scene in of uh, this year. So, right. Well, but, remember all the stuff with the guy and and feeling guilty and everything else. And they went to that place where they were doing this. She goes, "They're here for our gold." She was able. She did it for him at the reading. She was able to fucking. There was stuff going on in there, supernatural stuff, a couple different things. You know what I mean? Anyway, I thought it was horror enough. But there, where where it's it's you know if if I wanted to put it on my list if it was list worthy I wouldn't disqualify it like I did this and and possibly no exit. Well, but it's weird. And resurrection it's, resurrection would fit into this mold see, as well I as skipped of, it. of of no exit again I haven't seen no exit. Okay. And Watcher. See, I really enjoyed resurrection. I I'll watch it, but not I, now. Yeah, yeah. I just pulled see it from from being a contender on the list. See, but that's it, it's why worth I didn't checking bother. out. Unless yeah. you're um, uh, Don and Ellie, I think he did not like it. But um, wow. it's definitely worth checking out. No, I know people are digging it, but I, I wanted to make sure I asked around. And basically the feedback I got mostly was that it, it was more leaning towards, you know, thriller sound. And I said, that's fine. I'm just not going to. Yeah. There's enough movies for me that constitute as horror that, that I'd rather put in there to have it a strong list. Now, will you disagree with some of the things I consider horror? It, it does happen. It may happen. I don't know. And that does happen. But th this movie here, a couple of things I wanted to point out. I agree. Being strangers along with her is great. The um, I thought for a second there was a good misdirection. I don't know if you recall it at the time, but when they look, when they go back to look at the video in the store, and at first you can't see the guy. Yes. And, and I thought did you think all their head or something? Right. For it, split are they second. fucking with us? But yeah. I love that. It, Me too. I, it, that, I think it was definitely done on purpose. We're like, yep. oh, this is all going to be in her fucking head, or or the guy just knows the camera or whatever. Right. Uh, I, I, what are they going to do here? And then when you see him, I'm like, oh, they did that. They just held it off showing him just long enough for that thought process to go through right. your head. Oh, deliberate and and great. Yeah. See, good little things like that. Good stuff. Yeah. I, I there's a couple things that I did question. Like, if I was just in her shoes. I would just never open the curtains. It happened once or twice. At the end of that, don't keep the fucking curtains closed. Don't even look out there and ignore it. And then what, what's going to happen? That's something I'll, I would do. I'm not saying the problem's going to go away. No, no, but, it wouldn't have gone away, but I'll rebuttal it that it looks like that's what she did. Maybe a little once. later than she should have. And right. then uh, the drunkenness of her going to her, the neighbor's house and, and drinking and kind of being yeah, like, yeah. you know, in that state, she's like, fuck it. And she opens them up. So you see that's them true. close there. And I think you're supposed to get that impression that she did say, I'm going to try to just erase that. Yeah. Yeah. From me. But, okay. Yeah. No, that's good. No, that's good. That makes sense. I do think that he looks like Michael Myers when you see him a couple of times with the fucking hood up and the shape of his head and stuff. Well, not the hood, the fucking, the way his collar is and his head. I'm telling you, the yeah. silhouette looks like a Michael Myers silhouette. I think they did that on purpose. It, it was fucking cool. And the closet thing later, I thought about it when they first went in there and to the neighbor's room into the fucking their apartment looked in and they showed the closet and she looked at it i was thinking of fucking laurie in the closet and michael just i don't know why it's because i saw the closet yeah. and then it ended up meaning something later which was cool so that was cool here's where here's one of the problems i had not very okay. few but she had the chance to go over there and id him way early into the fucking thing and she didn't go the cop says do you want to come across the fucking thing and see if this guy that you're insisting is watching you is the same guy that followed you into the fucking store? She was, and that ter fucking... she was terrified. I think. Yeah, she but was... if it's him, I get it. But And my wife said the same thing. She's like, she goes, you better go ID him. You know what I mean? Because that's what you do. Yep. Now you know for a fact you're not crazy. And so, now they know that you're onto him. Isn't it just me? I was the other way. When the cop asked me that, I'm like, why the fuck would he ask her that? No, you go do your fucking cop duties and, and keep her protected. 
so yeah, what if it's not the same person? with that way as opposed to no go go an idea but then she, she there was curiosity there but you could see she was scared and that's why she sent her husband to go and then I her guess. husband undermined her again. Like, I think, again, it See? just reinforces the themes that they're trying to set out in the thing. But I don't disagree with you there because she does go later with the other guy's boy, uh, with the girl's boyfriend, who might be a little well, possessive, yeah. but seems to be, well, I okay. mean, from what we're told, we're only told right. he's not the, the, he's a nice guy, but maybe a little, like, aggressive with the knocking. But he maybe. seems to be helpful, right. at least. Mm -hmm. It goes over with her. For sure. Check oh no. Uh, yeah. And it's the same thing with with uh Francis, her her husband. I actually you know, when things are progressing, I like their relationship and I think he's a good guy and he's trying to do everything he can and he's supportive when he needs to be. Other times he does make some points like after things happen and everything else when they're at that cocktail party and he gets mm -hmm. mad and he goes, "He goes, you want me to do this this and this for a fucking delusion?" Cuz I I can see to a degree why he says some of the things he says. I don't think he's a bastard by any means, but I also no. think he did make some wrong decisions. There's no questions. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. Agree, with both, uh, agree with everything you've said. And I like him. He was the dude from, what do you call it? Um, Neon Demon. He was the yes, fucking... Yes, I was yeah. the photographer, right? Yeah, the guy, yeah. Or, the photographer. Or, or, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, him. Yep. So, so it was a good fucking... Good cast. Uh, I really like the look of the outside scenes, especially the outside scenes, yeah. the street, the fucking. It was really nice, well shot, and everything, and she, well that's lit. That's what I'm saying. They gave yeah, dude. every scene like a, a, its own sort of feeling and identity. And, and again, you don't get like I'm not saying you don't get that often. You, you, you again, it's just it was a nice touch in this movie. Mm -hmm. like, no, it's cool. it looked good. I think it's funny that the fucking <laughs> at the end of the day, the guy's a jizz mopper, the fucking killer. <laughs> That's a job. He's a fucking jizz mop, right? I, I, yeah. I kill people too, I think. You know? And it's funny <laughs> that the fucking... Oh, wait a minute. With with the cocktail scene is fucking... We, we talked about it a little bit. And I understand even the joke. And he should have just fucking said it. Well, now she doesn't have the spider to keep her busy anymore. At the end of the day... Big deal. It's a fucking off color joke, but it's not like. But he really... said it. He didn't say it in English. He, he should have. So Why is he? I know. Because he's that's the it? dick move. So he said it in Romanian, and right. that's what was like. And so now it's an insult. You're now insulting. You're like, uh, you're you're trying to do a joke to appease your your boss and and coworker, right. and and going against like that was his betrayal, if you will, to his wife. Like that was that was horrible. Uh, when you really break it down, and it was a joke, like you, you could have said, "Well, at least you don't have your the spider to keep you busy, or whatever." But by not saying it in English to her, he was trying to hide it. And with her learning enough, she pieced it together, and that's a great scene. Okay, and, and, so you think it wouldn't have bothered her if he would have said it in English? I think it would have bothered her, but not to the extent because he was okay purposely. Purposely excluding her, not realizing that her hooked on phonics or uh, uh, Rosa Stone or whatever Rosetta Stone has been working, and and right. she's been able to piece together certain words to be able to figure out what his joke was. Got it. And he surprises okay. her because she said she her whole thing was that he wanted she wanted to surprise him one day right. with something that in, in in Romanian, and instead she figured out something that he was saying that was against her. So it was uh, like it was a betrayal, whether it be small, yeah. but it was a, a relationship betrayal. Like, no, and no, again, that, I think the difference is that he said sense. it in Romanian, not in English. I get it then. OK, I makes sense. OK, and that's what pissed her off. Like she literally lifted up. She left her life, whether it was be, obviously acting wasn't working out for her, as she mentioned, but she left her life to come with him. And this is like it, it just all sort of just boils up to that point and that's where the emotion comes from of just being like I'm, I'm done with this they speak english whether broken or not they speak english and always go back into the romanian tongue when she's there it i would be like Fuck, talk english assholes happens a lot it happens to all yeah. the people i worked at the casinos with for years and years and years and i always would feel they were doing it for a reason that's why i didn't like it you exactly know what I mean? So that, but I'd be a jerk if I said do. something. People would say, oh, you're one of those people. Everybody has to speak English. So it's, again, you oh. can't win. You know what you I mean? It's like, you can't win, but she's put in this mm. horrible position. Well, and she's the outsider. Yeah. Again, she's in their country now. 
they don't have to conform for her, if you think about it, given that same mentality. You should learn, and she is. She's come to the country, and she's trying to learn, which, to exactly. be told, wouldn't you? We're talking about weeks into this or whatever. Yeah. Uh, right. not, and and, and they'll, they'll, they'll acknowledge and speak a little English, and then go right back to Romanian. And I get it if you're in a bigger group, and then, but there's no apology for it. Right. And even the husband will just start speaking. That's where they do a really good job of of saying like him not even like 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 he does it a couple times when they're at the at the dinner table or whatever. But they're at their house. They invited their friends over. I'm jumping scenes here, and but still, they yeah, start hey. speaking Romanian when they can speak English. It happens, but I, I, yeah, it happens a lot. But I've seen it. I've been with girls, like you know what I'm saying that that are that that are you know, fi- Filipina. You know what I'm saying? And they have their friends and they're together and they can speak English just fine. Filipino. No, they're Filipino because they're female. <laughs> really? I didn't know. You're you just making it, a joke right now. No. Really? It's like Latino and Latina. Anytime it ends with A, I didn't know that. it's the female version. Anytime it ends with O, it's, it's the male. I, so I knew Lat- that for certain things. Like even in Italian, they have that for certain things, but I didn't realize Filipino and Filipina was were, were, was the thing. Yeah, it's the same thing, just like Latino no, and Latina. It's the same fucking oh, thing. Okay, Unless I didn't know. Wrong, but that's what I've always knew today. See? No, I mean I knew it for Latina and Latino. I knew it for uh, Pazzo or Pazza or Bella, Bello, like my, right. the limited Italian I know. That I knew, but I didn't think it translated that fucking everything in, in the uh, everywhere. So for Filipino, I've always just said Filipino, whether man or woman. Ah, gotcha. All these years, I've been an asshole. Well, here, here's the weird part about oh. it. <laughs> Filipina, pardon me, the Philippines is spelled with a PH, correct? PH, yeah. it is, 100%. PH, right, yeah. But when people say Filipino or Filipino, it's spelled with an F, F-I-L-I. I, I never understood that either. So it's a mystery. It's history's mysteries. I don't know. But I, I didn't I, even know. One final thing. Why do they call him the spider? I do like the name. If I was a serial killer, I wouldn't mind being called the spider. But usually there's a reason for it. I What's thought it was because they cut off the head, cut off What's the heads. The like, isn't that a Black Widowy thing? Really? No, that's a female thing, but I mean, it's. Uh, do, do female uh, black widows cut? Uh, they bite off the heads of their the male. Do they? Yes. I, again, don't quote me. There's a, but I thought that's what, or, or one ma- master Ooh. spider does that. Like, uh, that's why the black widow was so huh. vicious or whatever. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna figure that. Out. Black widow deaths. Oh, that, that's people. Four to eight people die from a black widow spider each year. Busting black widow spider myths. I wonder. Black widow spiders are deadly. They're, they're aggressive. That's a myth. What's the truth? Well, we don't know. Bites are excruciating. Uh, they, I guess he'd have to really get down in there. And say, how do they kill? You know, how do black widows kill that their other black Dude, widow? As you're reading that, I'm, I I I went back to make sure I got the. Um... <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna. This is gonna show me how horrible I am. I went back to get the the information ready for our next movie just to uh-huh. make sure that I was up and running and not waiting for the thing. And the trailer for No Exit was playing because it's on IMDb. And you know how if you just leave it on the page, I don't know if you notice that the, the trailer or something will play now, uh, you know, as it's gotten more interactive over the years. It is the movie I was thinking. The poster I have has the main actress on the cover who happens to be Asian. And I just assumed it was a foreign film. <laughs> Oh, look at you. That's fucking but it, it funny. It just happens to be the, the 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 actual poster they've got on IMDb is not the poster that was used in um, Netflix. Interesting. So it, it's there for me to to watch, and it was labeled Whoa. horror because I specifically okay. downloaded it to watch on one of my travel trips. Funny enough. Huh. But I'll still watch it just based on your recommendation now. Yeah, check it. I want to know because if you think it's horror, then I'm going to have to go back. But at this point. I didn't qualify at that. So no, they don't behead them. They devour them completely. It's cannibalism. Uh, male widow yeah. spiders. It's dangerous. The, yeah, uh, they'll often devour the smaller males during sex, hence the widow in their names. In some yeah. cases, the female catches the male while he's trying to escape. But check this out. But often the male seems to welcome his fate, actively somersaulting onto his, his partner's fangs. Isn't that some shit? But some escape. They fucking, they do this thing and they, they, they land on their fucking... They do a somersault some other way, and they land on their, their torso of the female, and they take off. 
Interesting though, huh? But some get laid and then say, okay, now you're going to kill me. Ain't that some shit? Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, but what a way to go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, Martin from uh, right. Jason Lives. What was his name? Sweet something? What was the name of the yeah. fucking drink? Sweet Irene? No, not Irene. <laughs> That's your wife. Yeah, uh, Sweet Caroline. Mabel, I don't know what uh, it was. Yeah, shit. I know, we don't know it. Isn't that weird? Mabel, we don't know it. It will be the Mabel? death of but what a way to go. I don't know if it's what a way to go. I don't know. Mabel might be. Might be. Darling, anyway. you'll be the death of me. Maybe he just calls her darling. I don't know. But what a way to go. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, it's a half head explosion for me at the end of the day. Okay. And I already uh, shot my load. Full head explosion. <laughs> no pun <Nice>. intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the spider. <laughs> well, we talked about Pearl, what, two weeks ago? Two episodes ago. Now we're going to be talking about X. X. Also from 2022. Mm-hmm. In 1979, a group of young filmmakers set out to make an adult film in rural Texas. But when their reclusive elderly hosts catch them in the act, the cast find themselves fighting for their lives. And this one, of course, is directed by Ty West, who also did Pearl this year. Yeah, baby. Fucking A. This is it. Fucking Mia Goth just doing her thing, I'll tell you. Yes. And not just Mia Goth. Uh, granted, the whole she's the, the lead. whole cast, the whole <laughs> right, but the whole cast. And yeah, it's it's so cool to see what's her name too. Jenna Ortega is just fucking blowing up. We have Mia, who's been the fucking goddess for a long time, and and, and you know I, I can't go on and on about her, and she's done so much genre stuff and, Brittany, and everything Brittany else. Britney Snow's been in shit too, right? Like, and Britney Snow as well. Yes, she's been around a lot too, but me, but not Mia, but Jenna this year, she's done like fucking four horror movies. She was she's done the Scream one, right? She's done this. She's done the Scream. She's done. Um, she was in Studio Six Six Six. Not a big role, but she was there. And there was another one in, and I think she's the new Wednesday Adams, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but but she has more. She's got. She's gonna be. She's gonna. She's basically the new. Uh, what's her name? Nev Campbell for the Scream franchise. She's like the fucking new girl yeah. in that, you know, for for this for this newer one. But it's like she is all over, and she is so young, and she's just this itty bitty thing. She's fucking. She was born in two thousand two, you know what I mean? Mm. She's this young fucking just this adorable fucking you know young girl with big eyes and just so endearing, and she's doing all of this stuff. Like you look at so much going on with her. Let me see here, Scream. The Fallout, she was in The Babysitter. Was she in both of them? I don't know. But she's the new Wednesday Adams. She was in X, American Carnage, Studio 666, and Scream this year. The Babysitter, Killer Queen. And she was in that show, I guess she is the lead of it. That show You, where she's being fucking, no, she's not the lead. But she's in it. I guess it's kind of thrillerish. It was a fucking, it's a Netflix show where you're being stalked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she is done. Nice. Wow. All type of genre stuff, and she is just freaking way into horror stuff right now. So, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. That is man. cool. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. She's all over the place. She's the. It's we have a lot of these, these so-called scream queens nowadays. Are they still scream queens? I don't know, but we do have. If you think about it. Yeah, are you allowed to say that anymore? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But if you Gen- think about general it, general neutral uh, screamers. <laughs> That too. General, general. Gen- general. I can't even talk. Gender. <laughs> Colonel Scream. Screamers. Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Scream. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel, <laughs> Colonel Scream with the pipe in the uh, the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we do have a lot of them though. The, these days, it's almost like a, it's more so than that than I think we had in the eighties. We have a lot of 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 actresses that are just firmly entrenched in in freaking horror films now. Because it doesn't have the it's stigma. Great. That it, it carried back in the day. You're talking about all the shit that we were dealing with from a censorship standpoint. No yeah. one wanted to say, say they were on a Friday the 13th. Now it's a fucking badge of honor. Now you have, oh, it's first Jason. I was first Jason. I guarantee fucking Mr. Manny Orphans there didn't put that on his re- resume when he was like trying to get more active gigs <laughs> back in the day. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But it's ne- definitely not on Kevin Bacon's resume anymore or anything else. It was always <laughs> like a, a black mark in the industry. And now they're embracing it because of the fan service that has happened as they become cult hits and 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 they've got this following years later. Yeah. 
Um, and that's that's where a little bit of my like contention comes from because like from the conventions they realize that holy shit this is a cash cow, and I'm like fuck you to most of them. Some of them have never bad mouthed it, but there's a lot that bad mouth it now that are now embracing it. Well, would you? Uh, yeah, of course. But we've said this before. But I don't think well, if, I don't think I would have bad mouthed it to begin with. Right. Okay. I see. Yeah, oh, whoa, that's whoa, the whoa. I see. That's the I, difference of like the ones that are bad mouthing it that are now, you know, capitalizing or, or gaining off of it now when they were like, oh, this is a piece of shit. And I can't even well, believe I was in it. What do you feel about uh, Betsy Palmer, who basically her words were like, you know, I thought it, it took was me a a while. garbage. It would never be seen. It, it, yeah. But then she says, she, she goes, I again, I, I don't like it, but then she did say. Yeah, sorry for cutting you off. Go ahead. No, no. She basically says something like, "I didn't realize that um the love that all uh, all these fans have for the character and for the movie and stuff like that." So I just didn't know. And I've heard them say that they go, "I didn't know that there were this many people that were passionate about these kind of movies." So now I well, can't appreciate it. Is it that, or are they bullshitting us when they say that? Say, well, I know I, I can't make money. I, I don't know if it's bullshit. <laughs> Maybe right. maybe it maybe it is bullshit to get the money, but for whatever reason, she had the best answer that I could give. Like I mean, remember at the time, Gene Siskel or whatever gave her address out. I believe it was oh, him yeah. about uh, about whatever. Like they were coming after her, like whatever. Like I mean, you probably wanted to distance yourself. You're like, holy fuck, I just did this movie. Who knew I was going to be chastised for it and whatever? And then it became like that was the beginning of it. So I actually right. really can't come down on her too much because she's kind of. Um, she kind of embraced it later in life and said those exact same things. The ones that do piss me off, like, I mean, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, I, I have no connection to anymore. Like, I really, well, you know, uh, the fact that she's in these new movies, so be it. But she's just as easily trashed the old ones and, and forgotten them. And she's always, she wanted to distance herself from horror. And then she embraced it again in, in, in pieces. But I, again, but she's not attitude, a fan of it. her attitude does rub me the wrong way. See, I mean, she I don't, needs, I don't I, mind because she's not a fan. Just and because she's, she's not a, a horror movie star, fan. maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm undermining what she's done. Like I've liked her over the years, but her attitude does piss me off a little bit. Like even, even the other one that seems to be like the fans or, or the people seem to be dismissive of like Daniel Harris and um, Compton, whatever Taylor Compton, or whatever, about them running into her at the, at the, the screening right, and being, her pretty much dismissing them. I'm right. like. Like, who are you? You're just like a fucking... If you weren't doing Thank Activa you. commercials, you would be... They didn't call you back. No, I'm talking about Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, I'm thinking the other side. No, see, you're taking that stance. That's what a lot of people said. I'm like, they you know came why? up through as fans. Just I to understand. say, hey, I fucking played you in the remake. And the other ones, I'm your fucking daughter in the series. Oh, I don't know. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're talking about. Fucking, you were an Activa commercial. You're a fucking yogurt salesperson until Halloween came knocking at your door again. So fuck you. Yeah, but how do you know? <laughs> but hold on. Please. I don't know. <laughs> okay again you know, see but her how many attitude, times have i said this I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the attitude that i'm seeing not even that story the attitude that i'm getting a taste of of her i don't give a shit attitude whatever was like oh you tell him jamie that's the attitude that's pissing me off because i could see i actually believe those two actresses because of what i'm seeing of her sort of dismissive attitude and her i don't give a fuck demeanor seems well, like see I That's agree and I disagree. Through. Okay. Well, this is what, what I'm saying is I – here's what I think. I think that Jamie Lee Curtis does have that attitude and can come off in that snarky way, right? And I'm not saying she snarky does, but hold on. fun and playful. This doesn't seem fun and playful. Okay, fine. But she – I could see again, her saying my, my I don't know anything – no, I just think basically she doesn't know anything outside the franchise, outside the stuff she's done. So when they say something to her, okay, she probably said something. She goes, yeah, I, I really don't know anything about those movies. It's probably, it could have just been something simple as that. Yeah. Oh, hi. You know, I, I don't know. A pleasure to meet you. I don't know those movies. I don't, I didn't watch any of the other ones, but great to meet you. Something. Okay, but, 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 but again, hold on. We're getting dirt spin, but we're getting two people saying the same thing. Unless they've got some vendetta against Jamie Lee that we're unaware No, but of. they get eyes on them. This is what I'm saying. Everybody fucking wants to blindly believe these two girls who just so happen to fucking have a podcast. I, don't think, a lot, I think a lot of people are taking your stance. Oh, Seems really? Like I'd be surprised. Everybody I, I, blows yeah. fucking Daniel Harris every fucking chance they get. No, but it's just like fucking. I, I Here's what I see. 
they made it sound like it, they were such fucking victims of it that they were brought to tears. I think it's all a bunch of fucking gaga because they have a podcast and they can get eyes on them. And anytime, no publicity, all publicity is good publicity. And Jamie Lee Curtis uh, is going to be linked with them and it's going to go around on all the websites and people are going to talk about it. And maybe it's going to break national news somehow. And so, I mean, now we have a little podcast over That's here, which okay. we're already probably getting paid for anyway. And they are what they are. And who the fuck knows? Weren't and I happen to know. Podcast? And it was brought up. Again, I don't know. I just, I, again, they I know what I read. They, they have, have their, their own, own show. Okay. Yes. So, again, this is publicity for their show. I think they, maybe something sure. happened, but I think they over-dramatized the fucking whole thing. And, and you know, to make it sound like all this and all the, yeah, oh, 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 we were crying. Get the fuck out of here. The grown women. They're going to fucking make that listen, big of a deal. Listen, I can't disagree with you. I can't disagree with you. you. You could be wrong. I'll just say this. Jamie Lee, to me, is not a draw to a movie. If Jamie Lee's in the movie, I'm like, holy fuck, Jamie Lee Curtis is in a movie. Jamie Lee Curtis is in a Halloween movie. I'm going to watch it. I don't give yes. a fuck about Knives Out, sequel, whatever. I don't care. Jamie Lee Curtis is not a draw to a movie for me. I never That's has. Fair. Hey. I've been drawn to Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis. But I like her other movies, too. Prom Night and fucking Terror Train. I like that she was the screen True. queen back then. Halloween, True. too. I respect True. that era. I, 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 like, I like Prom Night as well. You're right. It adds to it. Her, and her performance adds to it. I like her being there. The Fog. I like her being these movies. You know what I mean? So I do like, and now I do, I did like Knives Out, but no, I wasn't even into the fucking, the, the 90s stuff she did when she got, at her, at her most popular time, I wasn't into her. Like for the world, like in the 90s when she became sure. close to as A-list as possible. I wasn't watching that shit. I didn't care about Total Recall, whatever the fuck movie she did with fucking Arnold and whatever else and some other thing and she got nude. Just, I didn't fuck. I was out of it. This is my spin. I could be totally right. I don't know her. I haven't talked to her. I'm not interviewing her. I'm not, I don't know I'm not either. friends with her. I'm only telling you what I like. Uh, and again, this is me being jaded. Because back in the day, I'm like, oh, Blue Steel with Jamie Lee Curtis. I'll rent that. And I rented it because she was in it. So I I'm, I guess I'm being, I'm, I'm totally going against, total hypocrite of what I just said. So back in the day, I would rent that. As time went on, and she, then she came back for, for H2O and she was blowing H2O. If remember at the time, she was blowing H2O. Like it was, and now and now she dismisses it like it's a piece of shit on, on the, the bottom of her shoe. And now this is the real sequel and whatever. Uh, again, marketing. So maybe she's doing her part of marketing, but I feel like she's just as much, yeah. as, that bitterness seems to come out and she just uses it. And again, I have no problem with a fuck the world attitude in a sense, but I get, it feels like sometimes this is directed to the fans. I really don't think, she she cares too much about the fan base, but again, I'm putting my own personal spin on it. No, that's fine. No, I don't even care about my, that. My thought process. I understand what you're saying there, and it, it and it is what it is. So be it. Again, don't meet your heroes. This, that, the other thing. Everybody boycotts every fucking thing, and this and that. And I'm not gonna do this because this person runs in it because this. I try not. I try to separate the art from the artist. But I will tell you this: just because of what I've heard. Okay. Again, it's what I've heard. I wasn't there to see. I remember Scout Taylor Compton doing something between the first Halloween and Halloween 2, something that was negative, and I forgot what it was. But then again, it was just a story, and I wasn't there. But I do know firsthand from a person that I trust very much that dealt with Danielle Harris directly in a fucking situation and said she was acting like a fucking self-righteous cunt backstage like the fucking world owed her fucking shit and they said this person has an attitude and people think that this this and this about her but she's really like oh, this so I i've always had that I, in my I've never head met her either and i feel the exact same way for her too i i i think daniel something about daniel harris comes across a little like i wouldn't use the term that <laughs> your your buddy user that the co-worker or whatever used for her, but i get that exact same thing from her too but I, again, I don't, I don't put people, I, I try not to put anybody up on a pedestal. Like Tom Savini is another one that pisses me off. Like he seems jaded now. Well, he's always been that way. And half the people that met yeah, him said he was great. The other half said he was an asshole, but I had him out. 91, when I met him, he did seem great. He did okay. seem It depends great. on the day. It apparently. just seems like age is, is, is uh, like, uh, like, and whatever. He just seems like a jaded ass. If you don't want to be talking about those movies, then don't show up at the conventions then. I agree. If it's going to be a problem with you, then just, just. Shuffle off and, and, or, and enjoy retirement. Or people listening to this and people that go to these conventions have heard the same stories we've had, including myself. I would still meet Tom Sippy. There's, there's very few people. I'm not into the whole celebrity thing. I don't want to wait in the line for an same. autograph on a picture. There's very few. And I don't care how popular they are. It's who I happen to like. Like 
like Ginny, let me fucking meet Amy Steele. And I wanted to go to that thing to see her. I wanted to go fucking possibly engage in anything with fucking Mia Goth when she was at that fucking TIFF thing when they were debuted Pearl there. That's fine. Tom Savini is, is, is a guy. There are certain people that I'm into. And it's nothing to do with how popular they are in the world. You know what I mean? It's it's who I gravitate to, and there, but there are very few. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, our Tom general. Tom just was a guy. Like, you could go right up to him I and get talk it. with him. There was no law. But he's a rock no star money. to me. There's nothing. No, that's and, and at right. my age of 16 right. or whatever it was, you know? when I went to that convention, he was as well. And right. I have and Linnea Quigley too. And he was talking to my buddy and telling him <laughs> right. how to do makeup. I got like I I I, I keep saying I'm going to post a video. I should post it sometime. He's telling him how to do how he would have done something differently with some sort of makeup. And he was giving my buddy advice. Like he was cool, but then age hit, or just maybe him having to fucking repeat stories i don't know maybe it's because his directing career didn't take off i don't know what it is but does now i'm hearing he's hot or cold or or whatever and you should never be cold at all at these events because that's what they are you know what you're getting yourself into you should know at this point what you're getting yourself into so then just don't show up if it's not something that you want to be part of i've always heard this though since 2004 when i've been online i've always heard he's hot and cold at conventions and things like that and everyone's different i I just think it depends on the day but what i was what i was getting to is this People have this knowledge, and I'm just as guilty in this situation as ever, Because if as anyone. Because if I would have gone to that thing and I could have met Tom Savini, knowing I could have been met cold, I still wanted to meet him. But I'm going into it knowing I could have been met cold. But ultimately, if if you hear all these things about all these people, then boycott it. Don't be blind fucking fanboys and just fucking throw your money at people when you've heard bad things about them over and over exactly. again and everything else. Don't do it. And then this stuff goes away, and then people won't feel so self-righteous. Don't fucking let them make money then. Seriously, boycott it. If you if someone gets a bad reputation, don't go to the table. Now, I'm a hypocrite yeah, because I just so told different. you, but yeah, I'm a hypocrite because for Tom yeah. Savini— Well, there's certain I'm things the, I am too. I guess you, it's not one brush of the same stroke for everybody, but yeah. like, I mean— uh, horror fans typically support because that's they're buying fucking physical media still. They're doing they're doing everything that they 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 can when you you pretty much have everything at your fingertips to stream. Not everything, but but a good chunk. Uh, and they will they want that they they will support and that's why the prices are the where the prices are, and that's why the autograph prices have gotten or picture prices have gone up fucking through the roof. I can't fathom paying for an autograph. I don't don't understand it. Even when I got the autographs back in the day, I didn't pay fucking shit for them. Well, yeah. And there's some hey, people I, I wouldn't meet. said hello to them, and they signed on on a, on a fucking magazine. How did we get on this? We're talking about X. How did this get... Oh, because oh, we're talking about... Um, Modern-day screen queens, so to speak. Modern-day screen queens, yeah. Um, I, yeah, and, not, and not, I'm not feeling the stigma. And that's how we went off the tangent. Sorry, everybody. I apologize, because that was my they fault. Love that. No, that's good. Yeah. That's the... Yeah, hey. That's the stuff people well, I like. I don't care if people we agree rush with not, because everybody has their own thought process. And this was, wasn't supposed to be necessarily fully, like, targeted at Jamie Lee Curtis. Because, uh, like, oh. I mean, she has done she's done enough genre f- films, but I just don't think she actually cares about them. That's my opinion. I, I, I think we That's care. Fine. Yeah, hey, I'm with you. Uh, but anyway, getting back to this movie, holy fuck. Uh, yeah. Again, this, guy, this guy's on a, uh, like, I've always liked Ty West. I think we've always talked about this. Uh, but man, my God, this has been his year. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Another one, another fucking great one. This is the one that started. I just remember being excited. It was coming out because Mia was finally getting to be in a feature role and for the first time, everything, she's always a side character. So I'm like, okay, awesome. Let's see what she can do. And I knew what she can do. I'm like, let's fucking see. And then she gets two roles here. I'm like, holy fuck. And I didn't even realize now watching it. Cause I've seen them both four times. As I said earlier, I could hear it. I could hear her voice in Pearl. You know what I mean? Where the first time I couldn't didn't didn't resonate you know what i mean but now hearing it so well and hearing it so many times in the in the um the american the southern accent like 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 we hear in this and in pearl hearing her speak that way because she hasn't done that before when she has spoken it's been regular english or because she's from the uk her her native you know speaking the way she normally speaks and it's not exactly the same because it's not the same person, which is even great. And that's what's awesome there. And her, the fixation of the husband when he sees her. Oh, my God, with this fucking microphone. Sorry, uh-huh. guys. The fixation of the older the husband because he sees her and he's instantly brought back 
Right. And remembers, right? Like it, it makes just all the sense in the world. Yeah. And doesn't doesn't he tell him because like stop fucking eyeballing my my you my wife did. or my girl. What did he say? I know I did it. Yeah. 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 What the hell did he say? He said something about it. Um Oh, I thought I wrote I Either thought I oh stuff. eyeballing him. Eyeballing yeah. he goes he goes easy there, Howie. I, I see you eyeballing her or something like that, something yeah. like that. But who can blame him? It, it looks just like his fucking wife when they were young. So I like, know hey. you don't like you don't like usually when they show you the end of the movie, like like the carnage that kind of happens. But this is a perfect example of doing it properly, Agreed. where where you introduce it for intrigue, but you don't see anything yet. We just know shit's gonna go down. Of course. And we just know there's a bloody mess. And there's something really not like, like something horrible hanging on a wall somewhere. And and then we get into the movie. Great soundtrack choices. The movie looks good. I got Boogie Nights vibes when she's like a star or don't don't succumb to a life that you're not. What is her line? It's her dad's line from his his fucking um, his uh, his whole preaching. Oh, 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 oh. I will not accept oh, the life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That I do I not. not the life. Yeah. It just the way she sits it in the mirror with the coke. I just got like Boogie Nights vibes from it, uh, which right. is great because I love Boogie Nights too. Yeah, again, not a ripoff, just just like like nuance uh, of Boogie Nights. I love that the 1979 kicks on with the American flag, like uh, that. The music choices are great. The way you're introduced awesome. to these characters are great, and they're all nice. And they and I like what they talk about because they they hit the nail on the head, like. They they kind of have a judgmental uh, director or not director uh, camera operator and his girlfriend is is the one you mentioned who's kind of pure and young and she yeah. sees it and she likes it and wants mm-hmm. to be part of it and it's like really it's just the beginning of the end for the whole group there but they get a good they get a good conversation in there of like we're just giving the American people what they want and everything else. It's true, and it was prophetic in that way where the the guy was saying, fucking, you know, uh, this is going to be – it's not going to be just for perverts anymore. The home video market's going to open up soon, and everyone's going to have – and it's true, and it was that. Yeah. And I, I also like the fact that the director – I think he is the director of the fucking camera guy, and the other guy's the producer. Yeah. I don't know. That's why, that's why I took yeah, it. Yeah. But he's talking about how – I'm going to try not to have too many comparisons, but I just couldn't help it going back and forth with these two movies. But he was saying how, you know – this is not pornography, but cinema. And he goes, and I'm going to make this fucking look like cinema. And I was thinking about the guy in Pearl who's fucking talking about projectionist, the, projectionist. The projectionist yeah. and his pornography thing and, and coming from other places and other countries and stuff. And then this movie itself, trying to make it a cinematic horror movie and have a style to it as opposed to just a yeah. regular slasher or something like that. I think there's a lot going on with, with the dialogue and stuff like that. And, I think it's really cool. It's really clever. And X, pardon me, Pearl actually elevates X. Even though X came out first and then Pearl came out after, I've gone back and forth with them so many times watching them. Yeah. And the things that happen, now I'm watching X and I'm like, oh, that's cool because da 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 with this and Pearl and everything else and the way they did it. And it elevates what you see in X because now you see X and now you see why. Why she has this attitude, why old lady Pearl has this attitude, because her life, all she kept talking about in Pearl was she wants to, I'm destined for things greater, this and that, blah, blah, blah. She stayed on the farm. The one thing she didn't want to do, got to stay with Howard, which is fine. And it seems like she accepted it, but what can you do? Her and now just, yeah, all this happens yeah. because she peeks into the fucking window and sees young Maxine resembling her fucking getting it on and being young and fucking... You know, and is her the right. fact that they use the same actress, of course, the makeup. We have to talk about the makeup. The makeup oh, job gosh. is phenomenal. And when you talked about gore, this is I, I agree with you here. Terrifier two gore versus X gore. X See? gore is more like Evil Dead gore, which we were talking about. There's something a bit different, a little bit more realistic. But, but I guess it's because this is more traditional, whereas terrifier also just dwells upon it as well but i see the difference here and you're talking there is a budgetary thing as well Um, and this is fucking gory and there's some good kills in this uh as well yeah it's done the the big difference between this and pearl this comes out and it's this slasher movie but let me ask you this as i'm watching the movie last night i i I say to my to, to my family i said i go the thing about this is what other movie do you see 
old folks fucking killing people like this, like a slasher. When do you see this? I'm saying to me, this Hotel was and then, well, okay, now they didn't bring a motel it's, hell, but different type of movie and different type of age people. But still, I hear what you're saying. They yeah. brought up uh, my wife said something. She was, I forgot what it was. She goes, something we saw not too long ago and she couldn't come up with the title. And then Frankie said the visit. And I said, yeah, the visit, I said, but it, it's not really done slasher style. And ultimately, all they did, excuse me, all American they killed Gothic. was the real yeah. two, two other old people that live there, and they chased some kids around. But yeah. what, when do you see a slasher where the fucking antagonists are fucking yeah. elderly folks? I don't think it's been done. Like Other than this year where it seems like old people came out. And uh, have you seen old people? No. Have you? Yeah. Is it so, a horror or not? Yeah, it's horror. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Should yeah. I see it? Yeah, you should probably watch it. If you, I, I okay. thought you'd see it. Yeah. No. Add, no. Sorry, add it to the list. Well, shit. Here we go again. I knew of it. There was a reason I didn't watch it, though. What mixed, the hell was I think reason? it's got mixed reviews, uh, maybe because it got mixed uh, mixed reaction from it. I mean, I don't. again, I'm not saying it, it, it didn't make my list, Dave, but I do have to rewatch it, to be honest. I should check it. It's a Netflix movie. I know that. Yeah. So, but anyway. It's funny how that's all again. There's these trends, just like there. We've been wanting to have a, a female serial killer, and then last year was like the year of the female serial killer. It seemed. It's great. Where yeah. all of a sudden it just was like all over the place, which was great. And all of a sudden this is, seems to be the next thing where, I mean, well, I mean, okay, we're talking about two movies that came out the same year, but that it seems to be this like a little bit of a trend that uh, is popping up. But yes, you don't think they're going to be. I guess that horrific. You're like, how's this gonna be scary? But it is, and it works. Yes, it's done right. It's done yeah. right. And, well, and, 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 and it's fun. You've got that style, and you've got a little bit of tongue in cheek. You got that so, a bit of self referential where at the end where they find the video camera, and they say like, what do you think happened here? It's like one goddamn bloody horror film or something like that. B movie. Yeah. B, B movie or horror. No, he, film? he said a horror movie. Yep. Yeah, horror movie. Horror yeah. film, something like that. Yeah. And that's how it ends. Yeah. Cool, cool little nod. Yes. I, lo- I love that shit. I love that type of dialogue. And my mind sort of reeling, going, "Is this is this movie gonna get out? Because they shot it. It hasn't been well, edited. Do you think it's gonna get out to propel Maxine, the sequel Maxine, and whenever that comes out?" Well, wh- this is what I'm thinking, and I said it at the end. I go, "One of two things is gonna happen. Either this is gonna be a porno that's gonna start her career, or they're gonna see everybody in this porno and say, we can account for this body, this body, this body, and this body.'" Where is this Maxine girl? She may be responsible for all this. She's on the land. Yeah. Or whatever. See, yeah. so so when Maxine comes out, is she going to be a famous porn star or is she going to be fucking on the run as a known fucking killer? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's going to be interesting to see which direction they go. Because if they do watch it, it's going to, all it's going to do is, hey, where is this person? If every, if you yeah, have nothing but porn, dead bodies. Bigger, a big porn one, star because of, of this movie that came out and, and whatever. And have you seen this woman? <laughs> I know, but right? It, they do it both. Right. It, it's cool. You got the crocodile and her yep. uh, Britney Snow's death there. It's, again, they make her fairly likable until she realizes she gets no respect back from Pearl, and she gets pushed into the water and then and whatever. And and it's that the way the crocodile just snaps her back, fucking or alligators. An alligator or crocodile? What I never fuck? know. Yeah, I never know. One of the two. Yeah, anyway, she gets but it, but. Right, killed. but she knew it was coming. She saw it there, Pearl. I'm talking about, and it, yeah. it's perfect timing for it to jump up. And then she's she's talking to her. Um, Brittany Snow is talking to her, and she's the fucking. You mean old ugly? And then she pushes her up, yeah. and then Pearl goes, and then she gets snapped in the fucking air, and she finishes the fucking sentence for her, bitch. Yeah. She says, yeah. "Oh, it's fucking great." God, it's great, I, and the, so much the fun. Lead, the crocodile or alligator coming out at uh, at Maxine. When she's just swimming in the water, oh, beautiful. What a big shot! Bird's eye shot down as it coming. Yeah, it's so well done. Yep. To introduce that uh, threat and everything else. Now, do you think that's going to be a look that comes back? The uh, wearing no clothes and just over- overalls. Again, remember I talked about this before. That is the sexiest fucking outfit. Who else did it? I can't remember, but <laughs> the goddess herself fucking did it here. Was it a Bill? And- Wasn't it Bill and Friday the Thirteenth? <laughs> no what movie was it though oh you know what it was it was a girl in one of the fucking amityville movies i think remember she was painting it was when we did the fucking yeah. the, the summer sausage 
to the girl's <laughs> painting somewhere, and I said, what a sexy look that is to have overalls and nothing else. Yeah. On. It's so attractive. Anyway, to see fucking it's Mia doing sus. it in this movie, I couldn't get over this fucking look. I was like, oh, my God, that is – what a look that is. Man, oh, man. Anyway, i got to yeah. stop drooling. But um, the Tyler Bates score, I noticed it this movie. I didn't notice it so much in Pearl. But in this movie, you could tell it's Tyler Bates who works with fucking Rob Zombie. I always think about Halloween two and uh, Halloween one and two specifically. You can tell it's the same composure with some of the things that are going on, and I like it. It's featured more in here than it is in Pearl, but I yeah. love the music in here as well. The uh, score yeah, and the everything, soundtrack. Everything's on point. It's it's yeah. it's funny because you know just talking within our group, I, I there's I think a lot of people have like dug this movie, but there just seems to be people that just didn't get into it, and I'm I'm shocked because it. It's another huge standout for the year. Everything just clicks. Favorite? Yeah. Well, I, I I think for for a lot, not for Chris A.K. Scott, I think was underwhelmed by it. Really, a slasher yeah. fan too. Wow. I think it's because of the old person thought to just not threatening. It's like I take this, oh, but I think they do it very well. Like when when she comes on to that guy, the guy's kind of just wondering why this old lady is out and about when he's trying to take off because his, his girlfriend got screwed and he yeah. he's not pure anymore and it just pissed him off and he couldn't take it. It is great how they mm-hmm. turn that prude thing around. He's like, yes. well, when did you become such a prude? And when did you become such a prude? Yes. It's great. And he just can't take it and he hightails it out of dodge and can't get out of dodge and then gets just stabbed right in the neck. So matter of factly, so beautiful. And then help me, and he, she pulls it out, and then she just starts stabbing him. Oh, and it's man. great. I love it because it, it again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, whatever. This is a feature film, but it's the same thing. I, I wanted to do a death with the headlights, and uh, in a movie, and I did it. It's in a short piece of shit that I did on, on online where the death is done, and there's a red light, but the headlights are there, and the headlights get covered in blood, and everything just sort of casts a red on it. I love really? that. Well, what? Intruder did it too. I mean, it's been done before, but it's how it's done here and it's how gory it is. It's yes. just fantastic. The first kill, and it's the first kill of the movie, and it's fucking great. Yeah. Yes, they're all they're all cool that way. But yeah, everything red and the don't fear. And then she does her little dance to that fucking French song, and she does his yeah. little fucking and, and for, for don't fear the reapers playing, and then it goes yeah. off, and then she does that little twirl thing and this and that, and and, and the classical thing, and then it comes back. And goes into fucking back to Reaper, and there's fucking blood all over, and everything's red. I love it, man. Oh, I think it's great. Um, I think it's, that's that it's shit. Fast. And I like Pearl talking when she meets Maxine. And she tells her, "I was a dancer before the war, and all this stuff." She's talking. She's created her own fucking thing. She wasn't yeah. a dancer. She wanted to be a dancer. She danced for yeah. some fucking pigs and cows. She thought she was a dancer. You know what I mean? She never became an it. Then she goes, but then, you know, but before the war, meaning before fucking Pearl begins. So obviously she wasn't a dancer. Now yeah. we know. We just know that she says that, but then she also says something else, which is cool. She says, back then there's nothing he wouldn't do for me. Talking about Harold, who obviously it's true. Covered up because the whole he, shit, yeah. Or Howard, came not back, Harold, sorry. Yeah. Right, yeah, came back I, and stuck I, with her through all this, and he's still fucking there. There's still nothing he wouldn't do for her. It's just that right now she's feeling neglected. Because, you know, he he's can't give her sex and, and whatnot. You know what I mean? And then these other people are coming out and rubbing it in her face, as, as she would like to think. And, what, you know. I, I want to know if you thought this at all. The the kind of reverse. I know, I know this is not what they were going for, but this is what I thought when I saw it. The reverse of Friday the 13th, where you've got the two people fucking on the bed that are the killers and the victim crawling out from underneath the bed to get away. Like she was hiding underneath that bed and they just start fucking there. I thought it was so cool. I don't know why wow. I, I thought of it like Friday 13th ask. It's, it was, it's a, maybe it's a stretch, but that's what went through my head when I saw it. The, well, the no, people it's... fucking are the killers and the victim is, uh, uh, or, uh, is underneath or the protagonist is underneath and the right. antagonists are on top. <laughs> and we've seen killers under beds before. And people yeah. having sex on top. Friday the 13th for sure. But it's just, it's it almost became like a trope. So it's like, wow. I, that's probably the only time you've seen slasher killers fucking each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because usually there's only one anyway. And so this is heart that. can't take but, it. I love how they, they play on that. And then yeah. the way that he ends up dying based on that art attack is, is fantastic. It's, it, it's, it's cool too. Because yes. when, when Pearl fires that gun, by the way, 
and just it, like that's oh. exactly what would happen. But it's comical. Right. It's like unintentional comedy or intentional comedy. Like she goes fucking airborne. Oh, I don't think it was comical it, you, at all. But but I laughed yeah. and loved it. Yeah. But the thing well, is, I laughed and loved it. But yeah, I loved it because as that happens, you see the fucking what's going on the screen with the preacher and what he's saying throughout yeah. the movie. And at that point, he says divine intervention. He's talking about, and I go, well, divine intervention was fucking what just happened there. That fucking save Maxine. Well, that, yeah, it was right. It's like that thing's on loop, and that exactly that's what that's exactly what it was there for. It was perfect, uh, divine intervention, and she keeps talking. And so she obviously was brought up in this ultra religious family, has taken mm-hmm. like she's she's taken his words, but are pretty much using them against them. Right, of course, because that's it what he a lot says. Now. Yeah, which is great. I lot. love that. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. It's fucking it's great. And how about this? Pearl recognizes her, recognizes her because of that show. Because she's like, I know who you are, that I'm gonna tell everybody. So he she knows who and I didn't think about this till Irene told me after the movie yeah. ended yesterday. And you know like, what? Oh. That's hilarious. I didn't think of it. I thought she was again kind of like how my right. mind works. I thought she just meant I know who you are. Because of the movie, I mean, I know right. your true self. You, you, you're fucking in there, and whatever. That's how I took it, but not directly. Of I know who you are, which I guess is a dual meaning, which is fantastic. It is. I never, yeah. I never caught that on, onto that either. Great. Not till yesterday, and she told me. I was like, holy fuck. And then, oh man, and and it's funny because she said the same thing. Uh, I, I, you know. I, she tells her, she's like, I'm nothing like you. Because she says, she goes, you're going to end up just like me. This and this, you're going to have the same life I did. And then Maxine says, I'm nothing like you. And then she says the same line back to her. I'm not going to have a life I do not deserve. And so it's she is yeah. just like her. But it's funny. But again, we're going to see what happens to Maxine. And how tragic that may or may not be as it was with yeah. Pearl. You know what I mean? So, God, there's so much. But there's two so much. different movies. This one is, right. is more grainy and dark. I'm not saying it, it, it doesn't have like, but grainy and dark and pearls bright and vibrant. Right. For the most part. Right. You know, like it, it, it's too. Oh yeah. I love how they, I love that too. Like the style. It's technicolor. Choice. It's a technicolor yeah, nightmare. It, it, it's fucking, yeah. they, they said to watch fucking like, I think he told her to watch fucking whatever happened to baby Jane and fucking the wizard of Oz. And when he, and I heard Ty West talking about, it, he was saying it's making comparisons to fucking wizard of Oz and uh, Mary Poppins. For the fucking the way of the look of 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 Pearl, and yeah. compared to this, which is does what it does, which is supposed to look like a fucking late seventies movie, and and for the time period, and pulls it off yeah, without he, he overplaying it. it. Yeah, exactly. That that's all I was gonna add to what you said. He pulls it off without overdoing it. Like he's got a knack for 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 getting it right. I mean, he, I think he was. Yeah. Um, House I mean, of the Devil. He's always had that love. Sorry. House of the Devil, spot on. Yeah, he did that. exactly. And he he shot it in fucking in in in, in thirty five millimeter when nobody was shooting fucking movies. Every everything was digital, so he shot it on fucking film. You know what I mean? To look like a fucking a late seventies, early eighties. That's what he did for what do you call it? The House of the Devil. Not for this. This wasn't shot on film. Although some things look like it, which works, yeah. which is it's supposed to be. You know, and there are there is film. What would they be? Thirty five, sixteen? How does that work? Uh, I mean, it depends. He probably filmed the if if it was the porno stuff, it was probably shot in sixteen. Okay, that that's but, that's what I was saying. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out if he, because knowing him, he may have stylistically chosen to shoot this on film, but it just doesn't seem like that's been happening much anymore. Like right. I make the joke, only Tarantino seems to want to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's like I said, but, if you want to make an authentic looking film, that's how you do it. Like I said, I, but I doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't look like the the digital movies that we're getting like watcher was digital i i, I still love the look of it oh me too did a great job with it but it was digital this one um looks like it was shot on film right no no it's it's very good now more um, more things that that i i liked i thought it was really funny <laughs> when she touches her when maxine when pearl meets maxine and thing and then she says oh, Why she, goes, she goes it'll be our little secret yeah. <laughs> and then maxine <laughs> says what will? Yeah, I know. What will? And then she's like, <laughs> well, that's that's important. That's important. She and it comes do back. It See, yes. Ty West is good at this. I love that shit in scripts where, where there's something. I mean, it's done time and time again. It's not mm-hmm. the first time nor the last time it's going to be done. It, it's been, but I always love it. I always appreciate right. when that when that comes back. You it's know? great. 
A hundred percent. And he, he does it a couple times here, a couple times in Pearl, same thing, even between both movies. And, and again, the things that when she's in the barn doing the fucking scene when she's going to shoot the porn and she's milking the cow. So she's wearing the fucking do rag and she has her hair and fucking pigtails like that. Well, when Pearl was in the barn, same thing, different color do rag and a little bit different hairstyle, but same fucking type of thing and overalls because she had nothing under her yeah. overalls in this one because it's 1979 it's porno and back then yeah. it was different but and then she uses the same brush she was brushing her hair as an old lady in this and x it was the same brush that she used on her fucking on her dead mother's hair when she was combing it at the end of pro on the fucking the, the it, skin and shit yeah, was coming uh, off with it yeah. oh, it's fucking nasty what if, what if they took it one step further and filmed the scene with them fucking a scarecrow or her getting it on with a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, that'd be too much of a comparison, too much of an on the nose thing. <laughs> yeah, she should have fucked the scarecrow. Or, or when when she couldn't fuck, uh, what's his name? Harold. He was having too many issues with it. So she brought a scarecrow out of the fucking, out of the closet and fucked it. Imagine that. <laughs> she pin, fucking, pin style. Yeah, pin. Put a dildo on it and fucking yeah. climb on top. Fucking rock and roll. Harold. Yeah. And how she sees herself through the window is kind of cool. Mia, uh, basically, you see fucking, you know, Pearl up in the window and fucking Maxine looking up at her. Very cool. There's just so much shit. That Landslide fucking song, you know that song, Landslide by the fucking um, Fleetwood Mac, that montage yeah. are doing with it. It's quite sad. See, here's the thing. Francesca and myself, I guess we're, poor, we're we are Pearl Marks. We feel sad for fucking Pearl. I do too. Even though I, I do too, too. Even though she's she kills people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's what makes tragic. it. That's, it's intriguing about it is because you feel bad for this person. Like she, you feel like she's a victim of the of just her upbringing and, and being trapped and and just couldn't escape. Yeah, man. It's fucking. It's sad. Yeah, she's a killer and everything else, but I don't know. Okay. It, it, do you, I mean, I'm sure ahead. people will twist it around for, for saying that, like, maybe they're making a statement of, like, uh, you know, these free loving and free birds and the, the this liberal life uh, will just lead to death because that's essentially what happens with the whole crew that that has this sort of uh, so be it and, and they're, they're sexually free and whatever. And they're, they're the ones that are all killed and destroyed. Well, how is that different from but, fucking the '80s with when them? It's not, like, I'm not saying it's different. I'm surprised yeah. that no one's taking because I don't. I get. I definitely get that Ty West wasn't going for that. Like, there. I don't. I think. I'm just saying someone could argue that because they weren't Christian and they weren't preaching, and then because Maxine left her preaching dad, that she did. She, you know, she brought this on herself. Well, yeah, but when you're and a college age it, kid. Yeah. You want to show college age kids having fun. How are you going to have fun without fucking sex and drugs? I mean, you, okay, <laughs> you are. I'm, not, you I'm just saying, I'm not taking that stance. I'm just saying I could see people right. arguing that maybe that that's a the, an element. I don't think Ty West was going for that at all, but no, that they could no. be used as a way to say, like, sure, argue sure. against it, you know, in a sense. It, but it, it is typical. It's the same thing you see kids having fun. That's what they do. So, but I hear you. It is. I, I'm surprised no one has said anything like. Now well, just like I, I remember when Forrest Gump came out. I don't know why this comparison came. That Jenny, you what know, she went uh -huh. against the grain. He did everything. He went in the military. He did everything by the by the book. Or or at least fell into it. Whatever. And she was the one that was the free loving hippie, free bird, whatever. She gets AIDS and dies. <laughs> hey. And, and you play with fire, you get burned sometimes. Well, that, I, guess, I, I guess that's it. But the the reality is like. Uh, you know, there there was an argument made like, oh, so if you're the free bird, you know, you get AIDS and die. But if you follow everything and, and you you know you do you you know you do things for your country and you follow you fall in line and do everything properly, then uh, you survive. It's okay, but it's it sounds it seems like a little more boring to me. But <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not yeah. denying that. I'm just saying that that's, that someone pulled that theme out of of. of well, the thing is, this one is definitely like. You, you got these people saying like, fuck it. Like, I, I yeah. don't want to be old and, and resent not being able to do it when I could and everything else. Right. And that's it. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with their narrative, with their narrative. If you do fucking fall in line and do this and this and this and, and don't fuck around, it could work out in, in, in the long run for you to have a better, more comfortable life uh, financially and other things. And just mentally, maybe, I don't know, but 
it's fuck, it wouldn't be my my way of life. I want to fucking have fun. So it doesn't yeah. matter. They, they can say what they want. I don't know. Um, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, the X Factor discussion, all that other stuff. Uh, what else? Anyway, did you think that that kid is a hundred percent the same kid from the fucking Evil Dead remake? Because it's fucking okay. boggling. I checked. I checked, and it's not boggling my mind. Yeah, how, how you know why? Because he looks right out of it. When I checked, when I checked the IMDb, you know, of course, it looks nothing like his character in the movie. It looks more clean cut and whatever. Of course, yeah, he's an yeah. actor. But it's so funny. Right, I yeah. thought the exact same thing. I went and I checked IMDb because I just watched the Evil Dead it's, remake. It's crazy. Like a week, oh, a week yeah. change ago, like right before I saw you. Right. They fucking yeah. cloned him. It looks like it's it's crazy. <laughs> How could this even be? And it's not that much the, later. The director of the movie. Well, it is almost right? ten years later. Nine well, years later. Two, yeah, but I mean, not that much where it, yeah. it could have worked, maybe. I, anyway, that was just, I, I can't believe how much he looks like him. I don't know. Um, The fucking pitchfork comes out again, which is nice. He used yeah. the pitchfork in the fr- and the way she uses it here. Awesome. As a matter of fact, like, let's talk about the effects again. When he walks up and we, and they give you the, the nail cam. Oh, that they fucks, fucks do, me they up. They do it all in one fucking shot. It's perfect. If those, yeah. and it's not even if it is CG. I'm talking about the fact he even lifts his foot up with it attached to his foot after. He must have just CG nail, and and put some sort of device on that would stick to his foot. But it's so well done, and it's all done in one scene. And yes, it gets under my skin. It makes me, it, I, oh, you feel every bit of that. Just like I felt it in A Quiet Place yep. when Emily Blunt steps on it as well. It, 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 it hits home. And this one is just done beautifully because, again, Oof. it's done in one take. No cutaways, nothing else. You see it and the reaction, the coming off, up, stuck to his foot, everything. And mm. then it cuts to, to, for the rest of it. But beautifully done. Beautifully done. The pitchfork where she, like, I love how she covers him up with the, with the hay. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. oh, it's awesome. A scarecrow. There you go. <laughs> she could have made him into a, a scarecrow. Yeah. But that was a great kill, too, with the fucking thing. And, and you know, they were playing up to it. You knew it was something's coming, you know, with those whatever peoples, if she you was will. attracted by Pearl, though, because you'd think if she was so sexually frustrated, oh, there would have been a scene of her straddling that guy. Like, I, so she sticks the. Uh, it's not a pitchfork spoke that goes into his eye. It's just a, a spike of some sort. Because oh, is pitch- it? Well, like. Otherwise, otherwise, there's four, three things that want to come out. There's only one that can make it through that hole. Well, yeah, but one in each hole. Uh, four I, holes, not, four prongs. No, I don't think that's how it was. I, it was you only oh. showed one spike come out, though. I know, I but because we're only seeing one eye. So <laughs> you can only see so much. They're showing the... Yeah. the, the, the I don't know. Could, I'm going to have to watch it again. Four holes through the fucking... Because he's peeping yeah. through a hole. So they, <laughs> it's almost like it's line. done on purpose. Like there's four prongs and there's yeah. four holes. But I don't know. Now I got to go back and look. I just assumed it had to have been the pitchfork. Because then yeah. she comes in the barn with the pitchfork directly. Well, that's, that's what I, but I'm like, well, that couldn't have happened with the pitchfork mm. because there's only the one eye hole and whatever. And it's not like you heard it go. You just saw the one spike go in. That was it. But again, maybe I'm overthinking it. But then, so he gets that, which was well done. And so he fucking guy steps on a nail, which was brutal. Then gets that mm. in his eye, which is brutal. And then, but I th- where I was going with it is that he she doesn't straddle him, like kind of dry fuck him. Yeah, that may have I been know. a nice little. That would have like, been something. Yeah, true. And they could have because again, that would have been like, a true dead fuck. <laughs> right, <laughs> a dead fuck and a scarecrow situation, and they yeah. could, you're right. They almost missed out on that. Wow, maybe that idea didn't come until they made Pearl. That's why. Yeah. If you can go back and change it, you probably would. You know, who knows? Maybe they'll do it in the fucking Maxine. Oh no, Pearl's dead. Maybe Maxine will fuck a scarecrow. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all, I don't care. I, I, let me a fuck a scarecrow. I don't care what her name is. Just just put her on the screen. And speaking of who's yeah. on the screen, how about that fucking shining thing <laughs> with the fucking X and the thing? They said instead of here's Johnny, it's fucking here's Jenna. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking great, dude. It's, and then she gets her oh. fucking fucking fingers oh. clipped so off. Well done. I just was like, why did you chop that side of the door when you knew the handle was on this side? <laughs> I know, right? Well, it's just that's like the fine. shining. You're, you're, when you're in that, when you're in a fucked up mode, that's what you could do. But it's it's great. 
uh, and then she screams. She's like, stop screaming. She's like, what do you mean? I'm locked in a fucking basement. Yeah, How do you she was a bitch, this? though, dude. Maxine could have left and avoided all that stuff. She got in the vehicle. Yeah. She was ready to leave. You could say anything you want about Maxine. But she specifically went back in that house because she heard the other girl screaming. Uh, what's her name? I even wrote it down, Jenna. I call it Jen- Lorraine. She well, heard Lorraine screaming. She went in there specifically to help her, and she calls her a fucking whore when she comes in and tries to help her and yells at her and shit. I'm like, yeah. you know what? I thought this girl, this little fucking church mouse, was the cute one and the good one. Now you're being a real fucking bitch, you know? But how do we not know Maxine didn't tip off the police? Like, how? why else would they be there? So maybe she left and went to the police. Maybe she did. Wow. We'll find out. Like if the police are we we open with the police already there and we know something's gonna go down, and then she's the only one that leaves. So the police are just not gonna show up for no reason. Now I don't know if there's a line mentioned of why they're there, but I would have just assumed Maxine tipped them off and said, Hey, we were just at this bar and the fucking people went crazy and killed everybody. And maybe she maybe that's an easy way for her to be out, but I don't know how Maxine, the movie Maxine, is gonna be a horror movie then. Um Unless this is this is sort of fucking awoken a a, a beast within her. I don't know. She was unaware. It's gonna be maybe maybe so. I, I don't know. I, it, it, it'd be weird to think that she escaped all that. She's bloody. She's fucking half naked with the fucking thing on. She just did a fucking fat line of coke and she's gonna drive to the fucking cop shop. I don't know. Maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe. It's it's possible. You're, you're right. You're right. Like she do a lot of coke just to just to calm her nerves and then get the fuck out of Dodge. But you're right. It's, it, but the cops are there. But it could be weeks later. Who knows? Now we do know. What the hell were they pinning that guy up on the wall for? What they do you think the end game anymore. for that guy would? The the Evil Dead guy, the guy that we think is from Evil Dead. Oh, Why so that's who that was. Naked? We still can't. I couldn't figure out if it was somebody else or somebody old. It looked like it was old, so I wasn't sure. I just yeah, assumed. I don't oh, I just assumed it was him. I don't think it was, but my wife said it was. But Frankie and I don't think it is. It looks like it's a corpse oh. that's been there for a while, and it's it's got these old fucking cuffs around its ankle, like it's been there for a while. But again, I don't know. I got to fucking freeze frame that scene again. But it probably was. You're probably maybe right. it, if it wasn't him. I just assumed it was because he's not. Did he have a beard? Later. Did he have a beard or not? Uh, yeah, I, I forget now. I don't the remember. The guy had a cup, beard that was it, hung up. I just assumed he was go- that guy because that guy was not in front of that car anymore. So after she stabbed the fuck out of him, I thought they sp- they but his pants are down, right? His pants are down. So like that's right. the only other thing I could think of. If it's not him, maybe that's maybe it was a fuck toy for Pearl. All those years. Or maybe he thought it was going to be a fuck toy for Pearl. Same way he thought that fucking Lorraine was going to be the girl that fucking Pearl wanted around when. Yeah. Which I don't even know what he wanted the girl for. The first time I saw this movie, I thought it was going to go into something supernatural. And she was going to be able to, in a sense, live on through one of these younger girls that are going to use her for a ceremony. Because at, at one time there comes that, that that discussion about this girl. I thought it was this girl. And she goes, ah, you know I don't like blondes. Which is a great yeah. fucking tie-in. With, yeah, because yeah, of Mitzi, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which is great. But when that line happened the first time I saw the movie, I'm thinking, so they're going to use one of these girls for what? I thought it was going to go into supernatural. But it didn't. And now if I think about what does she want Pearl for? Just to fondle her? To fucking live off her? Live through her vicariously? Pardon me. Maxine. Maxine. Exactly. It's weird. I don't know. And I don't care. I mean, I'm not going to try to rationalize fucking crazy people. Maybe it wasn't that guy. Maybe. But it was a man, though, that was chained up, right? Because you see, see, like, I think you see Dick. You see a dick, but something looks off about it. Yeah, it's it's like it's 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 been bleached. Yeah, something's up. And speaking of like dicks, his face and his dick has been bleached or something like did, that. Did you see the big prosthetic dick? I didn't notice it till this time. Well, I use. I, I was going to ask. Is that is that the real McCoy on that guy, or did they use? Oh, a so prosthetic? you saw it when Kid Cudi like, answers the fucking door and he's naked. Yeah, he's just it's wiggling. I saw. It I never noticed time. the dick dangling. It's fucking big Jimmy. How did you not notice that? Yeah. I, I don't because I guess I'm watching the faces of the two people and what's going on with them. I don't know, but I didn't notice the fucking dick dangle until this time. I'm guessing <laughs> it's a prosthetic. Dangling? You know, well, who knows? Not, Maybe it's the good real on him McCoy. For, yeah. That's huge. If you're showing it, I guess if he wants to, I would do if I were him. Yeah. Fuck. Well, you, fuck. I wouldn't wear pants into my fucking audition. If it, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going to pull a fucking, well, like a Boogie Nights. You know? Apparently, yeah. that's what Mark Wahlberg did. He goes, I got a full inch on fucking so and so or something. I forgot what it was. Uh, I didn't know his was always like, I want to make sure women are not disappointed. That was a prosthetic. I remember him always talking about that in Boogie Nights. But, um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I just assumed it was the real McCoy, but exactly. Wow. It, 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 who knows? I mean, don't. don't I don't know. Me. It could usually have been a prosthetic. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. They I would show guess it in the other scene. <laughs> That's true. That's true. How about but, the car like, in the swamp? Same thing as fucking. They did yeah. it again in Pearl. Yeah. Good shit, man. See, it's weird because I seen Pearl more in in the interim. I've seen X, then I saw Pearl like fucking three times, then I've seen X twice, and then Pearl, and then back to X. So I saw Pearl all at once, like in a chunk. So when I look at it, I compare it the backwards way. I'm like, oh yeah, it's like it is in Pearl. When I should be saying, when we talked about Pearl, this is what they did in X. But it's just it's because of the way I watched it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. So, and how about when the, the old man was fucking yelling at, at Jen Ortega and he said, you're just making things worse, he said. Howard. See, that's the stuff yeah. that makes me laugh that probably nobody else finds funny, but there's certain lines in the movie. I'm like, what's he talking about? You're just making things worse. What was he planning on doing is the funny part to me. Well, I don't, yeah. I don't know. That's it. Well, you locked sure down there too, so then that's exactly it. Maybe, you're right, maybe they wanted both those girls to do whatever. I don't know, some sexual satisfaction of whatever because he's locking her in the basement i don't know right i don't know what the hell they had in mind we'll never know because they're dead and was and what a fucking great death for pearl huh holy shit whoo dude that's yeah. awesome toxic avenger style but right toxic yeah. avenger style but better yeah fucking oh much great. better yeah dude. oh yeah whoo and back to the end when she's driving there's a song playing on the radio and they see something about a kitty kitty cat in the song, and I noticed it this time because when I last time I watched Pearl, when she went to see that fucking thing at the movies, the um the Paris Follies, and the girls were dancing and doing their stuff, and there was there was this song playing, and in the song they said at one point the lyrics go, and I, I've been looking for it ever since, and I can't find it, but there's some lyrics that go, and it's like that with the kitty kitty cat. Anyway, because I heard that line in that song, I kept yeah. singing that fucking song all night when I saw Pearl. The last I was probably annoying my daughter. The kitty kitty cat. It was a catchy thing. Anyway, again, we another all walk the wibbly wobbly <laughs> walk. <laughs> right. That that your favorite, yeah. <laughs> and now Kitty Kitty Cat comes again at the fucking right at the end of this movie when she's listening to the radio. I bet you nobody fucking caught on to that. Oh, I, I, I caught didn't. on to yeah. Last Oh, you've probably seen it. Yeah, you've four. seen the two a lot. That's you took awesome. Me four times. Yeah, and again, there's more, but I mean, how long can we go here? Uh, you know, well, and I kept it cool. I kept it cool. I didn't, you know, go too much into Mia, but man, she was fucking great. Two roles and the makeup and everything she had to go through eight hours a day. Oh, something fuck. for the That's fucking crazy. prosthetics that, and awesome. And she got it down, like b- both characters down. I, to be honest, I didn't know. It, I went into that blind, right? I, I do some. I didn't know she played it until the end. I didn't know she played me the two characters. Me neither. Until the end. I admit it. Yeah, yeah. that's me who loves me. Yeah. But I mean, she's so fucking covered. How would you think it was her? Why would it be her? You know. No, but it's it's, it's awesome. A full head explosion yep. for me, by the way. Yeah, full head explosion here. Yep. Yep. Fucking good stuff. Great it's been stuff. A great night. <laughs> yeah. It has. But yeah, I guess we should get out. I got a, I got fucking four tons of four feet of snow. I got a shovel. You know, oh man! I'm not doing shit. Anyway. I got a, I got I got a plow and I have my fucking I'm all broken up here, bitch. I can't work. <laughs> my foot, <you> know? <laughs> That's what I keep saying to my wife because we laugh about that line anyway. Yeah. I say I'm all broken <laughs> up. Poor girl has to go in the backyard and shovel a path so Bailey can go fucking do her business in the back. I can't even shovel. Can't do anything. And it's like I'm all broken up, all broken up here, bitch. I can't work. You know. <laughs> awesome. Uh-huh. Awesome. So. Oh man. Yeah. Well, Oof. thank you. This was a little less crazy than last week. A little less, but it was awesome. It was awesome recording live. Yeah. We'll do it live. Yes. <laughs> and we did. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll do it again someday if we're lucky. You know, that would be cool. But that was great. We had a lot of fun. Thank all you guys so much for everything, for sticking with us through As everything. Usual. Yeah, man, for real. And just, just I, I don't know. My appreciation is just growing more and more, because especially with everything – with the top 200 and I don't think about it because for me it was relatively easy to make my top 100 but when I think about what it takes and what people said when they sent us stuff uh, to, to take the time to do that so we can have enough submissions and everything else and I mean thank you for that because yeah. it is a lot if you think about it it just it wasn't a lot for me but for the normal person who doesn't have all his ratings in his phone <laughs> it is an awful lot I think so but no it was awesome so Thank anyway, uh, 
yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to uh, the American listeners out yes. there. You know? Yes. Happy so, Thanksgiving, everybody. Be safe. Enjoy your holidays. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you in December, right? Yeah. So thanks again. <laughs> Peace. Man, chi, chi. Times two.